Oh wow. I don't know how many times I think I could re That's a classic. Can you, can you not hear it? I felt like I heard the word knockers a few times. Oh, that's definitely that in there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Anyways, before we get going here, this, uh, this episode is brought to you by CycleWorks West, the finest dealership in all of northern Alberta and Edmonton area. Uh, even if you're not from Edmonton, you can order stuff from them. They ship it out next day. I've actually ordered parts from them a bunch of times. It gets here real quick. So check them out. They are... Uh, yeah, they they give back to the moto community and they're they're a great dealership. So yeah, check those guys out. And uh, yeah, check out uh, our website as well. Get yourself a little a little treat, a little T-shirt. And yeah, so hook yourself up. Hook yourself up. And we got Ryan Gauld on the line on the Skype. One of the Canadian legends of the sport. Yeah, take number five. Yeah, take two or three <laughs> or four or something like that. Yeah, I lost count. We can now. we can go with uh, we can go with number five. That was my best national number. I like it. Sweet. Yeah. There what you year? Go. What year? Ninety three. Uh ninety seven and ninety nine. Did it twice. Dang. Yeah. Yeah. Good times back then when men were men, boys. Four motos, none of this. <laughs> two motos, like you, like you pussies. Hey, I've done I've done the double. I've double class it. Most, yeah, I know. Like probably I'm five times. New jobs, boys. But sure. Hey, before I get into this stuff, talking about everything we're gonna talk about, what? What is a what is a finest dealer? Does that mean like all the women that work there are like stripper quality, or do they like they have good financing, or what's uh, what's the deal on that? I don't know. I never finance anything. They have some ladies there. I know that. I don't know uh, what they exactly what they look like, but uh, yeah, I what, guess it's uh they they do fine dealings. What really gets okay? You, what really gets you going when you walk in? Like when you walk into that dealership and you're like, damn, this is a fine dealership. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't know. Just okay. the, I don't know. It's a great community place, you know. Like, there's a few that I walk into. And I'm like, damn, that's a fine dealership. But it's like the flooring, and it's got nice. Yeah, they balls. got they got nice like, floor, nice... and they got big open ceilings. It's a pretty sweet dealership. And nice ladies. Wow. Nice ladies. Right. They got some nice men there too. Fine, I guess. fine ass parts girls. Yep. I didn't know you could there come is. by those in Edmonton. <laughs> it's not really in Edmonton. It's to, it's more like to the west of Edmonton. That's like a rough area of Alberta. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> we just shit on all of our Edmonton yeah, listeners. All, all the Edmonton listeners are gone now. Yeah. All the Calgary, all the Calgary yeah. rejects go up to Edmonton. You already pissed off Derek Barr by naming a goat after. I mean, your goat after him. Oh, no, we worked it out. He actually messaged me. as like, man, I'm honored to be named a, named after your goat. <laughs> Like, your goat his name is Darren or Mar. You remember Derek you remember Derek Barr? <laughs> not Darren Barr. Derek... Yeah, I know. Aaron Aaron Barr? No, it's neither they're not related. Derek Barr used to oh. race too. He was like 2012, 13 area era. Yeah. And oh, okay, uh okay. him and Keelan had beef and then Keelan got a mini goat and he named it Derek or Doug Barr or something. What did he name the goat? <laughs> okay. I can't remember. Something Barr. I know, Dog, Derek, some, bar. I know Randy was, bar. Randy was not impressed when you brought home that mini goat. I know that. Yeah, my old man. <laughs> my old man maybe get rid of the goat. He uh he's not a goat man. But he I I thought he, he fit in great on the farm, but uh, I was wrong. <laughs> How's the health, Keelan? How are we how are we making it these days? He doesn't like, want to talk about the supercross track. You built a supercross track, you must be getting ready for Anaheim one. Hey, you never know. I mean, you send some of that AMO money over, I'll I'll line up Anaheim one on a beta, Husky, Cowie, <laughs> Triumph. Okay, I'll tell I got four races left. If you can put your shit together and get to Anaheim one, I will pay for your flight. A, f a flight? I'm gonna need <laughs> That's a little all I'm more. Doing. Uh what about What's that? I'll pay for your lunch. <laughs> <laughs> Is that how much a flight is from there? Okay, I thought that was high dollars. For, okay, <laughs> fuck it, I'm out. I'm I, don't out. I don't know. Flights, <laughs> flights are pretty expensive right now. You might want to just cover the membership and entry fee, and that'd probably be better. Uh that is expensive. Did you guys hear how much it cost Tanner Ward to race Hangtown? Uh, it's probably like three hundred bucks for his license, and like three hundred bucks for. Actually, yeah, Jared, you would know. You guys I, are both know. Actually, yeah. I'm asking you guys would know. Yeah, holy shit, man, that's expensive. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, like it's stupid. A thousand bucks before you even leave your driveway. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah, 
just to get yeah. there. Hey. It was uh, it was like two hundred back in my day, so it's definitely gone up. Yeah, definitely. But hey, I heard I heard somewhere, I think on a podcast or something, that Dylan Wright was going to ride Sexton's bike. Do you hear that? That was on on Pulp Show. Yeah, yeah, I heard that too. And Steve's usually pretty good with pretty on point information. So, but I never heard that from Schuster or or Dylan or anything. Maybe it was just um, not like something they were going to do, but then they saw he got hurt and they're like, ah, didn't even say anything to him. Yeah, I, I don't even know if they. Uh, maybe it was just something they talked about down there because I yeah. feel like. Schuster would have shared. He would have said, "Oh yeah, oh, I could have done that or something like that." But yeah, maybe that was kind of the talk. Um, but I, I, when did Sexton go out though? He went out at, at uh, uh, last two. He was, was not the, there. Um, at but no, he was at Buds, right? Yeah, so, yeah. He just missed the last two. Last two, yeah. So and then the first one, when was ours out? Ours was up against Buds, right? The first, so yeah, maybe they might have been talking about it beforehand. But I don't know. Never cut. Never heard anything from Digger at any of the Supercross and stuff. But. It uh, it didn't happen, so it wasn't true. If it's not on the internet, it's not true. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. That, would, that would be sick. Though, <laughs> that would like. be unreal. But yeah, like that'd be insane. Like Tanner did pretty well. He apparently he went down second moto. Yeah. Like points. Yeah, is, he, he can't uh, really. He was battling for like 18th or something, and yeah. and uh, and fell, fell, went off the track or something there. But yeah, I mean, I think with if you look at the class, I mean, you guys were all fans. We love watching it. I, I'm 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 pretty sure you guys are like me. I haven't missed. I don't know. I haven't missed a race, whether it's GP, Canadian, or or US, in probably thirty years. If I've been able to watch it somewhere on YouTube or television or something. So anyway, you, you see that the the four fifty class is pretty depleted. Um, but I mean, Dylan is. I feel like he's one of those guys that goes down there and he's just able to shut off that whole. I'm um, you know I'm I'm in America. I'm against the big guys. He can kind of bury that stuff. I feel like he would have done. I feel like he could have, he would have, you know, done pretty damn good, pretty damn good. Like, yeah, with the field the way it is, I feel like he, yeah, would be like, yeah, top, like he'd be like around shock. I bet, I bet he'd be like, six. yeah, something like that, like a seven to ten, seven to eleven, get a good start, you know, fucking scrub some stupid jump where it passes. So I just, I could have seen something like that happen for sure with Dylan. He's just that kind of guy. And I think we might see it if it all works out. They're going to Italy, right? And it's not this weekend, but next weekend, I think, is yeah. the the nations. Is it next? So. Weekend? I think it's yeah, it's not this weekend, but next weekend coming up there, the twenty twenty fifth, twenty sixth in Italy. Oh, really? Hopefully they they get through all the all the crap and stuff they got to do to make it. But and because um, not a lot of guys are doing that, like a lot a lot of the big name guys are are like geysers out and Fevra and yeah. a bunch of the big name guys aren't doing it. So another little, you know, not that you would want it to be that way, but a little helping hand to give you a little extra confidence, maybe get a better gate pick, all that kind of stuff from qualifying. And Dylan might be able to turn some, even Piccolo, even you know what I mean. Yeah. So, uh, it, it could be a, it could be a pretty cool for Canada. It might you know have an asterisk beside it, but who cares? Still, it could be could be pretty cool for sure. Yeah, now well, this is a pretty good opportunity for him. Well, what do they say to all the champions in the states when there's an asterisk? You got to be there to race. Yeah, you can only race. Yeah, exactly. There. Yeah. You know? Exactly. You got to be in it to win it. They even brought that up on the Paul show the other night. They said that Zach Osborne's because his was only nine rounds. Oh, it wasn't as impressive then as Dylan's rounds. And I'm like, well, yeah, it's nine to twelve, but they're still champions. And the check doesn't bounce. If the check don't bounce, it's probably pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah everybody's so, still racing it, so it's still a championship. Yeah. No, exactly, exactly. That, but that's just the way everything is nowadays. You know, everybody doesn't want to just give credit where credits due. Sometimes it's just the way we, I don't know, the way society is, or maybe social networks, whatever it is. But um, does there you win a championship where there's one guy in it or? Or sorry, two guys in oh. it or twenty five guys in it, it still counts. Well, shit, to show up and not have something go wrong, that's yeah. a success in itself. Like that's a hard thing to do, especially in a series. But like even even at the donations, to have all three guys not have an issue, even throwing away motos, you still have a guy with like a twenty fifth place as your third result, yeah, right? For sure. Yeah. Not for yeah. sure. Uh, I think it. It'll be ex- that's that's an exciting team for us to send. Like, I think yeah. uh, I I, w- I sorry, go ahead, keep going. I I, well, I would agree. Well, I was just like I think yeah, Piccolo could either be like really successful or it'll just be an entire explosion. And same with Dylan. But it's like man, their raw speed is so good, and they put it together. Like, it, who knows? Maybe we could see like a repeat of what Benoit did. And uh, where was it? That was. Italy as well, wasn't it? Uh, France. Went? Or was, was that? that Fran- I think that was Mantova? France. Yeah. No, Mantova's this year. 
I thought it was. Uh, you're th- no, you're thinking of um. Oh my god. Magoria. Magoria, yeah, yeah. Magoria, yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Like they could just Piccolo and Dylan's raw speed, and then Tyler's just sort of experience and sort of you know clown way of going about everything, just laughing at it and showing up and being him. And, uh, yeah, it could be. It could turn into something quite uh, quite cool for the country. I hopefully. I, I, on my end of things, on the political side, because I did it one year there in 2014, and um, I, I have zero interest in supporting anybody that does it now other than the ones that really do it for a good reason. But I would love to see our team do good, put away all the bullshit. I hope those guys do good and they take advantage of a, a bit of a smaller, maybe not quite as deeper field. And like you said, just use that raw speed and sheer fun that the boys will have. And, and uh, like, yeah, they could if they pulled out like a fifth to seventh, um, be amazing, amazing. What uh, what's the track like there? I don't even know. Uh, hard pack, kind of ruddy, sort of like um, kind of like maybe a Calgary Edmonton mix, something like that. Uh, they had a they had a GP already there this year, uh, and um, uh, it's it. I think it. it I, I think if Piccolo, Dylan, I think both of them. I, well, I think all three would like it. I think it would favor. I think Tyler would be maybe the weakest link, if you will, being more of a sand growing up in the sand area, but now he's, he, he seems to ride any place. Where the hell? He was just riding in Italy at the ISDEs and rock and dust and snot and everything. So it doesn't really matter what he seems to ride. So it'll be good. I'll be watching for sure. As much as uh, I, I think everybody around the country will be watching, it'll be good to see. Hey, do you know if, did Tyler just stay over there? Or no, he know? came home and went back. No way. No way. <laughs> yeah, he's got no vax, no plan to vax. Not, I don't know, oh, we don't need to get into that political nonsense, but um, yeah, he just like, yeah, I just fly and come back and get a get the test two days before, test two days back, and I'm just like, man, they let him in, and he's, yeah, I'm not quarantining at home. I'll just I'll do this. He goes down to the bakery and hangs out, <laughs> still and shit, and I don't know if nobody's knocking on their door or or Karen or what, but yeah, he's able to do whatever the hell he wants to see. So. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, I don't think I don't think they're policing it too much unless somebody complains about you. Well, I, yeah, true enough. Although, I mean, last year uh, for all those guys that came in, um, they were checking up on guys like Welton had a border guy come to their the house. Uh, Phil had a border guy. This year, nothing as far as I've heard for any of the guys that stayed up. Um, but yeah, they they had the, not like border guard, sorry, but like a, somebody from the border checking up and making sure they were quarantined and staying in the same place and shit like that. Last year when it was all was fresh, but this year, yeah, it's a little bit a little bit more wide open, but. Um, you know, there's mandates coming down. I think you guys are in Alberta are like super wide open right now. I think, right? It's mm-hmm. like it's not even happening. No, we're well, actually, yeah, we're we're open, but like they just made us put masks back on and stuff. But yeah. hey, I want to I want to add or I want to ask a question, uh, and why I won't name names, but uh, there was two individuals that happened to ride green bikes <laughs> that happened to be from not of this country. <laughs> that, that uh had come to canada and didn't well, i could be wrong but i don't think they quite uh, did the the regulatory quarantining well like i said i think this year everything was a little bit more lack lack on the border nobody seemed to check up nobody did any ratting nobody did any um inspections or did any spying so uh whether they were or they weren't i i i, I know that I'm pretty sure Sanai might have been right on the dining. Whoa. Well, might have been maybe two or three. Oh, I'm, I'm pretty sure you've named the guys. There. Whoa, <laughs> whoa. Your, your secret code obvious. is broken. <laughs> I think they well they they came to my races so it's pretty oh simple, like, well I didn't want to na- you know, I didn't want to name AMO or anything throw you <laughs> under the bus no not at all man I got no rules in my thing man just give me make sure your money doesn't is the same color as everybody else's pay your bills and come on and race but uh, no actually they they reached out prior to that I think I think Messon might have been two or three days before the I think the fourteen day thing or what is he might have been at like ten some I might have been thirteen I'm like look at I don't care. If yeah. they come on the property, I'm like, I didn't know they were here. You know what I mean? Like, what am I gonna do? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. kind of thing. Problem. You know, like, uh, it's not my problem. Like, I'm not, I'm not the freaking border. I'm not the government. Like, I'm here just trying to run a business. If someone wants to complain about it, then I guess we'll deal with it when it comes. It's just like uh, Ontario. What day is it right now? It's the 15th. Ontario is freaking launching some uh, mandate on the 22nd, and I've had people asking about. It. I have four races to go here in Ontario for AMO, and they've been asking me, "What's the, what do you think? What's this?" And I'm like, "Look at." I until it becomes a problem for me, I'm not gonna make it a problem. Like I, I don't know why, why I would do that. I'm not gonna worry about it. Like we're outside. There's no rules around the outside thing right now, yeah. and 
Um, it's it's going to be pretty ugly here in another seven days, I think, in Ontario as far as restaurants and gyms and uh, there's people protesting hospitals and shit. Yeah, I, yeah. I don't even I can't I can't even watch the fucking news right now. It, 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 that's it's ridiculous, man. I can't even handle it. I just, I just want to I like working and hanging out with my kids and riding my dirt bike. And that makes me sound like a, like a teenager, but I'm 43 now, and I'm like, I just would rather do that than listen to all these yeah. people bitch and moan about shit. Just shut the fuck up. Go to work. Pay your bills, yeah. and have a smile on your face. I, I don't know what else to tell you. Yeah, it's it's getting old. Hey, where are you going to Sandali this weekend? No, I'm at uh, Gopher at the track bes- behind Frank's place. I don't know if you guys ever rode that one or not. You're ha- holding a race there? Yeah, so we're just doing a full revamp of it, making it longer, wider, taking out some trees, no putting way. in a gate. Yeah, so uh, taking out the, I believe he's taking out the mud pits where the mud bogs were. Yeah. So, um, oh, yeah, it's going to be pretty good, man. We've been posting pictures. Diggs is actually, he's uh, been putting in a whole shit ton of work. He's pretty excited about it because he wants to have it for like down the road. So not even shitting you in Ontario, I could have three separate races, individual rounds on three different tracks now at Gopher News. Yeah, yeah, crazy. for like for amateur stuff. So it's yeah. it, it it's pretty cool for that. I mean, obviously that could make it easy on certain things you want to do promotion wise and stuff. But yeah, um, he, they're he's putting in the time, man. I and then um, what I don't know what's going to happen with the Supercross track. Um, but I've already said, dude, let's get we'll do some night races. I'll rent some lights and make it tame, and we'll we'll yeah. go let the super minis and the you know open it open junior like six seven classes and just kind of have a fun little maybe saturday night series at some of the the weekends that we're doing amo events so i'm down man i'm uh i'm willing to do anything to let people ride dirt bikes right now i see how many people are into it and all i have a ridiculous amount of new customers at the races this year and as much as as much as i'm kind of overgoing okay yeah by the way there's a flag and there's a rule book and you can't ride an 85 and in this class and just because it says open beginner that doesn't mean that your kid on his pw is in that that's the tight class and you know, just explanations, stuff like that. But holy shit, there's so many new people in our province. I don't know if you guys have seen it, if you guys are still going to races, but holy shit, there's a lot of new people interested in our sport. It's awesome. Yeah, no, it's great. It, well, we were at uh, a local race this weekend in Calgary, and like, yeah, there's probably 30%, 40% of the people there now. Well, maybe 30% of the people there now that I don't recognize, and a lot of them yeah. don't even know who I am either. And yeah, it's, yeah, it's cool. And even did you tear up? Did you tear up a little on that one? <laughs> what do you What do you mean you don't know who I am? <laughs> yeah, going around giving people the nod. Yeah, and they kind of like just look at you, blank stare. Yeah, I, it I really gets to attribute, me. So yeah, I guess it beats you down. I think I can attribute to the reason why this is happening. So I, I'll just again use Ontario as an example. So when they did this to us last year, um, going into it, I went I went to town, man. Like I literally went to towns. I called government officials. I called health, the health control. I did as much work as I possibly could to finally get our, um, 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 oh my God, Doug Ford. I got him on the phone, like our freaking premier of Ontario. He gave me two minutes of his time because I was just basically annoying the office, I guess. And I'm like, look, man, we're like golf courses. We're like marinas. We can be open. We're on all this land. We can follow guidelines. I built myself and and um, Gopher and and Walton and Sandali kind of put the brains ahead, brains together and built this big guideline for paperwork shit. Right. And uh, anyway, we did all that. They let us go. But like hockey, soccer, baseball, that's they they didn't like fight. They didn't like like force their way in to kind of make it happen yeah. for their customer base. And I think the reason is is because the guy that's coaching, he always he's already got a 60-hour job. Yeah. 60-hour a week job. This is like volunteer work. You know what I mean? Like, but for me, this isn't volunteer, man. This is my livelihood. I want to get a paycheck. I want to make money. And, and anyway, I think that's what happened. Uh, like, again, I'm using Ontario as the example. And then it just kind of sort of flushed down the lines. Everybody sort of being able to do it and, and use the the book, the guideline. And, and uh, now we're seeing it. Those people that used to play summer hockey or maybe AAA or soccer, or they, you know, maybe they're not going to the cottage as much because they can't, they can't go into the township or whatever it is. They're like, wow, fucking, we can go over here and ride a dirt bike every goddamn day. Let's do this. And now, boom, they're barbecuing, they're biking, they're, they're mountain biking, they're stasicking, they're all this kind of shit. And then they're going to the races and having a blast. You know, it's, well, it's, it's, it's time to jump all in, in my opinion, right now. Yeah. We are all hands on deck to try to get people to see the sport like everybody in this camera view right here sees it and, and uh, hopefully make it so uh, Keeneland will race pro class in the fall. 
so you can and without making a bunch of money and stuff and just go support support the sport man so, so you can get a paycheck yeah, yeah so you yeah, can get so, a yeah. paycheck <laughs> hey man actually some of the paybacks i had at uh, the early races when we were having like 30 man gates I was like a six thousand dollar purse. It hasn't yeah, been that way no in like freaking twenty years. Well, I'll come if if I get the six k. Well, it wasn't all to one rider, but it was. Six k to me sounds good. You're gonna be Dylan yeah, no, for the six k. Uh, actually, no. If you guys remember, Dylan even make it past the first moto of the first amateur race in Ontario. He yeah. crashed there with me. He wasn't. He was almost not gonna race the first round of the national. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I want to just wild. go back to what he was saying about uh, stealing some of these like hockey teams and baseball teams and stuff. And I think the reason the sport's kind of grown as much as it has too is because the whole family can come out and do it. It's not just watching Johnny swing a baseball bat now. Now it's Johnny, Lisa, Tyson, mom and dad are all on bikes, all out there together. I think we're seeing some of that growth too. Is like, oh, this this is something the whole family can come do not just one of the kids at the rink or wherever else. Yeah, I think you're that, right. That's a uh, great point, actually. You know, one that's like uh, for now, you got these guys, these Stasics that are allowing like two and three-year-old kids. Yeah. And then say a P-Dub or a CRF-50 is your next three, four. And then I, I bought my kids those electric bikes. And until that, they really, they just kind of like riding. Now they're just, they want to go to the tracks. They love uh, well, one of them likes racing. My oldest boy's a little timid. He's more like his mom. And the middle one's more like me. He's the right amount of dumb. And uh, <laughs> he, uh, they, they love it, though. They, man, they go to the tracks. They're meeting new friends. They're riding stay six. And, but like you said, like it's a, the full family. Everybody's barbecuing and yeah. hanging out there. And then, you know, next thing you know, they're buying a motorhome and they, or a fifth wheel or whatever it is. And they're just like, this is great. And then they're going to a, yeah. you know, on an off weekend, they're going to a Gopher or Walton or, or Sandalee, wherever they're close by, to go and practice. And then they camp out all weekend again. Like yeah. it's, um, I mean, the, the picture's been painted the same for ever, right? Yeah. We've all known it. You, you, you go with your family and traveling, you're telling stories and this and that. And um, now all of a sudden, maybe we're just kind of getting more into that. I always used to call it the Walmart crowd. You know, the one they go to Walmart, they don't see a dirt bike there. They buy a hockey stick or a baseball bat. Yeah. And now there's nothing really about them doing that. And they're all of a sudden, oh, there's look at that, that store over there. They got dirt bikes and. And oh, they're not stupid expensive, and oh, we can get into it. Oh, yeah, we can ride over here, and oh, I can get one for her and him. And yeah, yeah it's uh, it's definitely um, it's definitely a good time to be involved in. I mean, as much as the sort of negative of this this COVID nonsense is brought, it's in our world. Holy shit! If you own a shop or a uh, or you're a manufacturer of parts or something, I, I think you're doing all right. I think things are okay. Yeah, Absolutely. for sure. Yeah. And kind of to add to like just it kind of being a family sport too, like. When I showed up to go for this year and to see all the changes that Diggs made to the facility, I was like, man, like this is like, this should be a poster for our sport. Like this is, should be the flagship facility for our yeah, sport. Yeah, it, it's, uh, I gotta, I hate to pump Diggs' tires, but I was blown away. So at our first race, the ideas, uh, which was, uh, or no, wait a minute, my fault. Um, uh, I went I went there in April because we were about to go racing and then we got shut down. And when I went there, he took me around the park and he said, oh, I got this idea, that idea, blah, blah, blah. I'm hoping to have it done by the end of the year. And then by the time we got to the first race, which was the middle of June, I was just like, holy shit. Like, you have done nothing but work and they got that pond. But yeah, yeah. I agree, Keelan. I, it's a, for years, it would be hard to say, use the word facility that we've known, you know, your MTFs and your GPFs and ones in California, wherever they are now, like that's a facility. Yeah. Oh yeah. Is that his end goal with that? Does he have an end goal with that place? Is it to host a donations type race or to be a facility? Like, I don't know. know. It just, it looks, it looks like a golf course and it looks like a place where the family can go and actually have a weekend. It was awesome to camp in those trees over there. Like that's a sweet place to stay. Yeah. And they can, yeah, his plan is uh, he's going to put hydro and sewer and, for and I think there might be a well, you guys stayed in the in the woods. There is there a couple in the woods already? Um, I don't think. No, so. there's not. No, no. Okay, so that's the plan then. Is for that and like yeah, make it a a camping area, and then you got your dirt bike, and then that pond, and yeah, man, you could spend the whole freaking weekend there and do a whole bunch. Of, you go trail riding one day, side by side, ride the dirt bike track, go swimming. You know, it's yeah. uh, it, yeah. it's definitely yeah, it's a facility for sure. It's yeah. pretty cool. And that's the best part about it too, is that it's not just for dirt biking. Like 
people of all walks of motorsports basically off-road motorsports can come and and enjoy mm-hmm. something there like whether it's quads side by side dirt bikes yeah and- again that's going to bring more family out because you like to dirt bike but your sister probably wants to ride a side by side right uh, other way around well yeah <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you love side by sides yeah yeah but. That's what you should be racing side by sides, Keelan. That's what you're at. Yeah. Quads? You want to get into quads? Yeah. Oh. Who knows? Maybe my dirt bike career is just slowly dwindling. You need to go to quads. Do you guys host AMO? Does AMO do quads? Oh, shit. Oh. I think you might need to repeat that. that. Oh, that? I missed that. Does okay. AMO do quad racing? <laughs> did it again. What the hell is it? The internet just doesn't just like quads as much as we do. <laughs> Does AMO do quad racing? Yeah. Absolutely not. <laughs> yeah, just not, I got nothing question. against I got nothing against the quad community or any of that stuff, but it would it be, it came down to a lot of the tracks just Oh, internet. So I did have them the first year uh that I was doing stuff oh, okay. and um it it just it, it just didn't fit. It was it was like the ski or snowboard battle or something. It just didn't work out. Yeah, yeah. it's terrible. Remember back in the day the the provincial series in Alberta, we had quads. We had like three classes of quads, and the track would just be polished oh, yeah, every yeah, moto. Yeah, yeah. Hey, yeah, actually, you're dirt tracking, you're dirt tracking. Also. Yeah, yeah. Hey, would you uh, would you think of uh, the round at Walton where they had the off road racing and the flat track? Would you think of that? Um, I I liked it, the concept of it all. I think we got a little too greedy. I think it was too busy. Yeah. Uh, to mandate and control things. A uh, perfect example was we got shut down on Saturday and we had to like, we're on radios calling Bear. He's trying to do the track over there and there was injuries and things like that. It was just a melee of things. I think we tried to pile too much in and, and uh, that was Brett's idea and, you know, try good, good to try to knock it off. I know that he, behind it, he was trying to like, you know, put some real good income into the facility and getting a good kick going on since uh, the April time when we got shut down and stuff. But um, I think that I believe that that's going to happen again. Yeah. I just think um, I just I don't know. Don't just just slow it slow it down, man. Don't just try to steal it all in one moment. Let's slow it down. But if we if you want to talk about the three moto format, I did like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we talked about that on our last pod, I think, or one of the last ones. What, I think it's uh, great for spectators. Right? Yeah, like, what'd you like awesome. about it? It's great. Well, yeah, I'm not I'm not a racer anymore. That's what I liked about it. Yeah. Because if I was <laughs> yeah. a racer, I wouldn't like <laughs> no. that one. I wouldn't like that one bit getting. There's, you're constantly in a battle. There's no resting period whatsoever, which I needed a lot of when my time. Um, but for us on the show, there was just always something going on. There was no no breakaway leader or anything. There was always a fight happening. And then, obviously, for a fan's perspective, buy the tickets for that one all day long. Yeah. Do you see more of that coming back next year? Like maybe two or three or four of them? Um. In my opinion, so the way that I think that the series should work this next year, if it's the Loops or Wild Rose or whatever, well, actually, sorry, I guess Drum Heller and um, there's one in Manitoba, the ones being talked about. But I say you do the either the first – it doesn't have to be the opening weekend. Maybe it's the next weekend. Wherever there's a good idea of where you can get amateurs coming and supporting the whole thing, but do a Friday like you did this year at Walton and then a Sunday, and there's your rounds one and two, and then a third one at West, and, and then maybe not a fourth. But or or trying to condense four rounds into two weekends so not everybody has to travel so much. And then the same for you guys on the West. Instead of having to stay for eight weeks at a time, try to condense them. We just did it, and it sort of worked. So trying to condense it so it's cheaper instead of being on the road for so long. That's just a theory I got in mind. I don't know, I don't know if it would make sense or not, but um, I, I feel like the longevity of our pros gets – smash so much because it's so it's such a long ass summer you're driving so long unless you're getting everything paid for and you're flying everywhere but i just i really think it wears thin our country's so goddamn big and so vast it takes long to get everywhere it's not quite like the states where there's just something happening on the roads everywhere all the time um i just i don't know i just think that would work better and i i thought that worked good at walton and i, I can't see why it wouldn't work again yeah it's uh yeah you got a point about like just the logistics or the logistical challenge of the country and then trying to make, make a series work around that. And all right. So here, okay. Let me point this out. Okay. Instead of trying to be 10, 12 rounds, although you want to have a good, I think 10 is a, well, maybe eight could be the minimum. And you try to start them in, instead of June, you're going in May 
and then you're having maybe one a month and then you're trying to combine it to doing some off rounds, but trying to make it so that weekend or the weekend after the pros could stick around and help the local community and come and race the local scene, make some money if it was like that purse wise. And then another national later, like trying to just jam them all quick back to back to back. We literally steal the Keelan Meston from the local scene. And then by the end of the summer, you're like, fuck this. I'm tired. I don't want to go there. I'm literally about to see it this weekend. Yeah, I'm going to sure. have, Absolutely. I'll bet you there'll be two pros at my race this weekend. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. It'll be, you know what I mean? They're tired. They're over it. And I, even at Supercross, I was talking to a few of them and I'm like, you know what? I, I am always done really good this year. I'm like, you know what? I'll put up some money. I'm like, Oh, I don't even think I could go up. I'm like, I'm telling them that I'm going to put up a purse. Like I'm not bullshitting. Yeah. And like, ah, man, I'll be tired. I don't know. I, man, I'm, I got this plan. And I'm like, all right, well, fuck it then. I'm not going to do that. Uh, and, you know, kind of thing. So, um, I, if spreading it out, I, like I said, I, the looking at it right now in the grand scheme with the way that the amateur scene is looking, and like you guys just said, you just saw a taste of it. We got to jump on that as an industry. We have to find a way collectively yeah. to make it so the nationals, and the pro level stuff can work together with the amateurs. It makes sense. So it all has the same structure going through and we all buy into it in the same direction. Yeah. That way the teams can sell product at the races, whether it's merch or whatever it is. And people can start trying to make a little bit of return on this investment that does not seem to have much of a return unless you're the fucking champion. And even that doesn't pay a yeah. ton, but it, you know, you have a number one plate, I guess, which looks good in the office, which you can see in my picture. I don't have one of those. So. <laughs> well, there's definitely something to be said about that. Cause out here in Alberta, the provincial series and whatnot used to be a full gate of pros. Like you'd have every single top pro out here. And that was kind of during the time when, I mean, as stupid as it was, it was split East West in the 250 yeah. class for the nationals. So guys wouldn't go out East. They'd stay back and race the local level yeah. stuff. So if we can get back into something like that, I don't think I'd like to see the series split East West again. We're not big enough for that, but no, no. You know, like no, you're I saying, don't. get get these pros out to the local race. They can get a cash purse. Like guys used to walk home with a few grand every every weekend. Yeah, you know? yeah. Here, the, well, here, the money back then was good, but like, because well, guys were showing go up, ahead, sorry, go ahead. right? Well, I was I was just gonna add that, like, yeah, like back then, like the provincial money was really good. Like you could, you even when I first turned pro, like you could walk away with like three k in a weekend. Yeah. Um, but. To add to the national thing, um, like by the time the series is over, it's there's just there's that burnout, like because it's just yeah. everything's so condensed, and it just it's especially if you're a privateer and you're on the road and it's a grind every week just to get to the weekend, and by the time you finished, like especially for us out west, by the time you finish like five or six rounds out east, you're just ready to get home, and that kind of goes back to the logistics thing. Like if you're, yeah, it's so expensive to try and run a series. And if you want to condense it and make it cheaper, that's great. But you're, even if you like condense like what, six rounds into a month and a half, like that's a tough month and a half. Whereas yeah. I was even thinking yeah. after like this year, I was like, man, it'd be kind of nice if like you could just get like one solid break in between just to kind of like re like reboot the batteries and then hit it hard again. But that being said, I also didn't race the whole series, so um, I don't know. But that's just kind of how I felt in the past. Like, so, like sometimes, I, like I actually didn't mind having a big gap in between the the west and the east in the past. Like, like I think we had a couple of years where we, where we had a solid month off. Yeah, so three could, weeks at least. Yeah, so it actually gave you like a little bit of time to enjoy your summer at home and kind of like regroup, spend some time with friends and family, and then yeah, get back to racing. And like, cause I even like, man, I like, uh, my buddy Boston's out, uh, out yeah. in Europe right now, like racing or, uh, with KTM doing the GPs and they're racing from like, like May till December. Mm -hmm. But, yeah. the, but obviously, yeah, like there's a lot more resources and money and things to make that happen. But like they have big breaks in between the races. And I even asked him too, I was like, man, like what, what do you think the secret is for like the Europeans? And why they have so much success and he's like the only thing he really like touched on was that they just really enjoy their downtime like when they train their ass off but when they have a time to to relax it's like they're really taking advantage of it when they got a big break in between 
in between rounds, they're they're like they're not touching a bike. So and, I don't know. I mean, in in Canada, we we got a big break because our series is only June to fucking August. <laughs> so lots, yeah. lots of break as far as that goes. But I think also too the one of the things even I I always used to say this back when I so in the nineties when we first started being on television, we thought we were bigger than we were. We thought, oh, we're on TV now. We're we're the same as. In 1999, I'm on television, and so is Jeremy McGrath. Why can't you make the same kind of money? And the older I've gotten, the more I realize that, you know, our country's enormous. We don't sell that many dirt bikes. Uh, or we sell a lot of dirt bikes, but not enough to pay that kind of money and stuff like that. And, but I think we're spoiled with the TV stuff that we either see ourselves or think of ourselves bigger than we may really be. And then now our teams and our and our salary or value and everything has gone up higher than it than it should in our reality of industry. Um, and, um, it, it sucks saying that, man. And I, like I said, I'm a, I'm a realist on this kind of stuff. I sit with a, a bunch of old shop dealer guys that I know and have some beers and we shoot the shit about this kind of stuff. And I'm like, man, it, it would be amazing. Like all these rigs and we have all this stuff, but like how much money should Dylan Wright make in eight weekends? Yes. He trains all year, but how much money should he make in eight weekends? Da, na, na, na. That's that's a t- that's a tough one. To you answer, know what I mean? Right? Justifiable, like you're Mr. Honda Canada or Yamaha Canada. You've got Dylan Wright. He's gonna go win. We got okay. We got eight rounds, so that's sixteen motos. He's gonna win ten motos. He's probably in four overalls, and he's gonna become a champion. How much money should that pay that guy for that job? Seven. You got a guy that goes and yeah, could, gets twenty five dollars an hour at the auto shop down yeah. there, and he makes. He makes forty grand for the year, if that yeah. forty five thousand yeah. dollars. I say like seventy five grand is well, like, pretty good, right? When you, I like that number. When with you, bonuses and everything too, or is that salary? Uh I'd say with bonuses. Me and Jared, wow, I like this kid even more now. <laughs> that seems realistic for like what the what the rate what are what we are right. When you put it on paper, like he just said, eight weekends or whatever it is, it's a pretty minimal amount. How many bike sales is he actually creating? How could you pay a guy a huge dollar to do that? Sure, he's putting his life on the line. He's training all year round. Well, the money's but... got money's got to come from somewhere, right? Yeah, there's just not the financial backing to do it here like there is in these other countries. Yeah. I don't. I. This is just an idea, and like I could be totally out to lunch on You're this. Out but to lunch, but I, I would, <laughs> I'd be content taking less money. If I knew that it was like, like almost if it was like a unionized thing. Oh, that's a, that's a big <laughs> word. Uh, I, I know, big I know. Word. Uh, association. Moto, yeah, association. Should we go back to 2007 Manitoba? The just good times call, moto? <laughs> hold on, hold on. Let's just say, yeah, sure, whatever. It was like a, a unionized thing between manufacturers where, let's say, if you're a factory team like 101, Honda, Cowie, KTM, that for each rider you put up, like let's say you have three riders on each team, that and that's that's what you have to have is three riders. You got two 450s, one 250, and each salary is like let's say both 450s are 40 to 50, and the 250 kid is like 30k or something. And, right. and then you get bonuses on top of that. And then if you win, and then you have a, yeah, your top three bonus for each round and top three bonus for uh, the championship. But to me, that salary number, at least for me, I feel like I could get through a year on that and actually be able to sleep at night knowing that I could pay my bills and and still charge each day to make this career work. I think communism. you're not that far out to lunch. I think your lunch tastes great right now. Um, no, but it's... I, like that, it seems that is the exactly what needs to be. There's all it, it, it. We always used to say, how could you um, in the 250F class or the 252 stroke thing where the me, the mess and how do you control what stock and this and that? We should have a stock. Everything should be stock or spec tires and yada yada. That right there is how it should work. Of that, every team um, with manufacturer support should have a. A budget limit. Yeah, a cap. That's how like, much you like a real like sport. A cap. Yeah, but, yeah, a cap. But Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris just said, Chris just said <laughs> communism, which it obviously, <laughs> yeah. it, it obviously, it obviously sounds like it, right? But yeah, in my like, 
you got a guy like me sitting here being like, man, I'm making like. Does it not feel fair, Keelan? Dude, well, <laughs> does no. that feel fair? <laughs> all right, all right, but no, I agree with you. But you got you got a guy like me sitting side. here being like, why, like, why the fuck am I doing this when I'm making jack shit for cash? And so you got a guy like me, like, is one of the top top racers in in Canada that's contemplating how much longer to do this or even continue because I can't. I can't make a living at doing this and I got to think of other ways to, to keep doing it. And this isn't even my like racing dirt bikes isn't even my sole income. But if you have some sort of structure like that, you might keep the interest of racers and knowing what they can push towards. Mm-hmm. Like let's say racers below myself, uh, the intermediates and they're like, Oh man, like, like there, there is a light at the end of the tunnel. So if you're you know? getting your 50 K a year or whatever number, you threw out there from your union. Um, <laughs> how long would your career be? Would you race for eight years, 10 years, 15 years? What would the difference of length in your career be? Cause you're almost 30, right? Yeah. How much longer do you think you would race if you were making 50 K this whole time from 10 years ago to today? And like, would you keep going? Would you pack it in because you've had enough still and made enough from it? Like, you know, are people quitting because of a money thing? Or are they quitting because of the drive or don't want to get hurt, start a family, I, don't want to travel? Well, I think those, I think, I don't want to say that's like that question's irrelevant, but it's like for me now, I'm, I'm doing it solely because I love it. And sure, I make a little bit of money and yeah. I have other sources of income. Yeah. But my, unfortunately, and what ticks me off is my sole focus is not just in racing because it can't be because i gotta right. i gotta focus you, everywhere yeah. to make money yeah. so that i i, I can right. pay bills right. but i would love yeah that i could have my sole focus into racing because i am financially comfortable mm-hmm. and yeah maybe if i was it, it like i would put in a solid career and and whatever and and yeah maybe that's up to the team to decide the kick me to the curb because I'm not cutting it or or maybe I am and and I decide down the road I, I don't know yeah. but yeah I, I, I think uh, the, yeah. the problem we have with our sport is that once you get into it you get so goddamn hooked you, yeah. like you just said there Keelan, you put every fucking thing you have into it yeah. whether you're good or not whether you're the guy that's leading the class or the guy that's in 15th you just find this it's such a self-confidence building sport you feel good about doing it. You, you get that rush of adrenaline, all that kind of stuff. I get guys, I have the, I don't know if you guys see in Alberta, but I got like 30 B riders. They're yeah. psychotic. Yeah. They're like, they still think the window is open, man. Yeah. Hey, Keelan's hurt. <laughs> Keelan's hurt. Put me in, coach. You know what I mean? Like, I'm just like, holy, and like, I, where's my trophy? Where's my, I'm like, holy fuck, you guys are like, wow, okay. I, yeah. I guess that's cool. But like, you know, it's, it's just you start doing it, and I can actually make a great example of it. So my kid right now, my oldest kid, he's just – he'll be eight years old in uh, – fuck, I should get this right. March, I think, Sam, yeah. Um, I got three of them, so it's easy for me to mess them up. Um, he is – he's super shy. He gets really, really timid in big circles and school and setting and stuff. So And he doesn't like racing right now. He likes riding his bike, but he doesn't like racing. So I'm like, whatever, no problem, no, no problem. But I, I keep telling him, like, just ride your bike, dude. Like, I'm telling you. There's, there's nothing better than a feeling of being by yourself and catching a little bit of air and, yeah. you know, railing a berm or whatever. And then now that I'm saying this, I'm injecting that same drug into him that, that when he turns 18, I'm going to fucking ride a bike my whole life. I never want a job, dad. Like I did when I was 18. <laughs> and, and like Keelan is, you know, we're talking about this. It's like, it's, it's weird now this, it's a, this revolution reality popping into the heads of it, but man, it's just so damn attractive once you start learning how to do it well you know in a good way and you got cool gear and you you know you meet yeah. pe- everybody you meet's cool and they get their it's always good conversation it's lots of fake tits running around and, <laughs> yeah. you know all that kind well, of all that kind yeah. of extra stuff Even Tim going back to the the new entrances <laughs> into the sport like at the local race we had this last weekend here uh, i was sitting on the line or i guess it would have been a couple weekends ago when i was racing but sitting on the line and there was a new kid in the beginner class and I guess he won his moto. He came down to the line. His dad was sitting there. And he was, like, so stoked. That was the funnest thing in my life. I cannot wait to get out there and do it again and win. And, like like you said, this sport is so addicting, that drug to it. I don't think money 
really matters to us. Like it does to I, a point when, you, when you're making it. a career yeah. out of it. I've never done it for money. Yeah, not right. Not like, once. That's right. why I think and even if you're getting paid, keep, you're still yeah. And no that's matter why I what. keep doing it is because it's like it's there is things beyond the money, and I just when you know you got you got more left in the tank, you want to keep going, or it's you just can't get enough of that thrill, or yeah. it's just yeah, there's no other drug like it. But uh, yeah, when it is a career, that's it's yeah. It makes it bittersweet, you know? Yeah. Like, it's yeah. like you show so, up. And then keep going. Sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I was just, just going to say, yeah, you show up on a weekend, you you get a bad result, and it's like, oh, man, like, why am I doing this? Or you get a good result, and it's like, sick. Like, man, I just <laughs> want to do this I got a, I got a podium, and yeah, I want to do this forever, but I only made like 800 bucks. <laughs> it's like, well, geez, you know? Hey, Keelan, you know, 800 bucks in a week's pretty good money. I'm just, I don't know. You guys are <laughs> you know, oil. Uh, oil hey, no, no oil money uh, here. Yeah. No oil no, money I'm here. Kidding. But Seasonal what I was going to say, too, the other, thing, um, the other thing that not, not ruined it because it's obviously pretty cool that people have got so educated on it, but when that, that big switch from McGrath to Carmichael, it literally changed around the world. Yeah. It didn't just change in the States. It changed around the world and now making it like you can't just fuck around during the week, man. Like you got to get to the gym and you got to eat right and all this extra stuff that you have to put into it to make sure that you're good on Sunday if you want to compete for the career position of racing, not just yeah. the fun racing. Yeah. But if you want to, if you're in good shape too, then it makes it even better when you're the vet 40 or vet 50 because, you know, you're stronger, you're going to maybe be less injury prone, that kind of stuff. But if you want to make it that career, like it's hard, even though we do only have eight weekends. Uh, or 10 weekends of racing to, to call it this pro series. It's hard in the middle of the winter just to, you know, go in and plow snow for six months or, or fucking cutting grass or whatever the job may be. And then you just drop that. And then, okay, I got to go to the gym for three weeks to get in. You, you just can't do that stuff anymore. You know what I mean? That the, the amount of work, like, God, I, I can't even fathom. Like I always, you ever watch that? Uh, what the hell was that? show that's the ultimate fighter show where they all lived in a house and shit like that and they like show them when they're training uh they was called the ultimate fighter yeah, anyway ultimate and it showed fighter. those guys training and, and then you see what these guys are doing you see, you see what these guys are doing now like with alden and everything i'm like fuck that i'm out man like this and you see cooper webb's left alden yeah yeah cooper webb the top of sport has left alden and not because he doesn't know what he's doing or anything because he's getting fucking burnt out working that hard after two like, years yeah. he said he was gonna yeah. retire he was thinking about retiring yeah yeah no, he was like 26 insane. or something, right? Yeah. 27 years old. Well, that's when Ricky you know? retired, wasn't it? 26? Yeah, 27. Yeah. Same with like Dungy. Yeah, RB, he, all these guys. He fucking, he was just sick of winning. I think he actually just got <laughs> sick of winning. Um, but yeah, RV, RV Dunge. was the Alden. If you talk to him now, I've actually had a couple, you know, a bunch of conversations with him because of doing some pulp stuff. And I asked him, I'm like, what's, he's like, man, I just, I just didn't want to work that hard anymore, man. I want, I like the money and I want to win and stuff, but like, I just, I never, it was not as fun as it was yeah. and trying to keep it fun as well as making it a career. That's the big thing. And that's, you can put that in anything, trying to have a career, whether it's a, a tech person or a podcast runner or whatever it is, eventually you're going to have to put more goddamn work into it than you originally well, did because you were doing it for fun. And it it's, turns into a, a job, which is a job everybody hates. Yeah. You, funny you say that. Cause like people say, Oh, work a job you love. You'll never work a day in your life. But anytime you turn something you love into a job, you end up hating it because <laughs> who yeah. loves to work that hard at everything every yeah. day that you love? No, you love it because it's, it's fun and you're going to strip the fun out of it. You know, pissing in a cup every weekend for some uh, taking blood draws every day, wearing a stupid VO2 mask all the time. Like that gets wearing on those guys. Are they doing that at the super series? Taking blood and shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're doing drug tests at the super series. Paul Pookie's. Paul Poop, hey Jared, take a piss in this, buddy. Yeah. Might not be for performance enhancement. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Sir, you are not qualified yeah. to go up this gate. Right? They, they were not performance enhancing, I'll tell you that. Uh, hey Galdi, we're coming oh, for your shit. we're we're coming for your job. We did some announcing on the weekend at the local race. Yeah. It was a big hit. Oh coming for your job. Well, I'm getting pretty veteran out there, fellas. There's got to be someone to fill the shoes eventually here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I, I will Can't be the that, only game in town. Man, the, the Flow app was 
solid this year. Like I heard some some mixed reviews from the, like well, the first couple rounds. The first round was pretty rough, but was it? It was oh, like no, not no, even no. like it was just like the 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 camera angles and like this this like it was just kind of seemed a bit like spliced together. But second round was good. Just like, kind of oh, yeah, like the struggles yeah. we oh, had yeah, starting tonight. Exactly. No. Yeah, you well, can I, tell I that guys that actually um, ripping their head for the ears majority out. of people that were able to watch it. Obviously, the flow is the major way. Like our U.S. friends could watch it, um, unless you had because um, it, it. So Fox Sports Racing, that's Canada, right? And then Fox Sports is the American. They don't. It doesn't show like our show, right? The unless it's on a rerun, like it doesn't go live. Yeah. The only way you can watch it live is on the app, and. Um, you know, to be honest, it's funny. I've been doing this with these the Triple Crown guys now with the Thompson crew for, what is it, like six or seven years now. Uh, maybe not five years doing TV stuff. And it's gotten better every year. They spent more money and stuff like that. And then this year was like a big expense for the studio and everything. And, yeah, round one, I guess, there were some glitches. I don't see that, right? Like when I'm stealing yeah. my yeah. camera. I don't I don't know. I get someone tweet at me or, that you know, that fucking sucked. Or, this is garbage. And I'm like, you know. I don't know how much you guys follow Paul, but he, you know Jason Wygants gets blamed oh, for everything in oh, America. Yeah. I listened right? to all those pods. So yeah, I was I'm getting blamed for these things. I'm like, all right, whatever. This is kind of fun now, and I talk some shit and you know tell the guy chirping me on Twitter something, whatever. I, I probably bang your mom in the night. Like <laughs> it it, it, it's more fun, you know. I'm having more fun with it, but but man, I tell you that it got better and better, and and it wasn't just my mom telling me that the show was good. There was other people <laughs> yeah, saying like, yeah. we're really enjoying this, and this is really good, and we're liking it. And, and uh, it's obviously a little bit more laid back than what you see in the states. They're they're a little bit yeah. more yeah. corporate angle, structury. Like I used to do arena cross, and now that's a nice shot. Bouncing back in the mid, they went down there with the same Canadian attitude. They're like, ah, we don't really want that. We just we want to hear like you're knowledgeable and this and that. And I'm like, all right, I'm, like I thought you hired me because we're fucking we're fun people in Canada, not for be stiff. But <laughs> yeah. um, it you know you can be a little more a little more off the cuff. So if you guys enjoy it, stick with it. It's fun. I I you yeah. know what I I do it. I do it at Walton all week long in the field. I do it for television, so there's no ego on it. It's just, I love it. You meet new people. You, and the best part about it, and I don't know if you'll ever get there, but is when a kid comes up for the first time, whether it's a pro or an amateur, on the podium, and you're the first person he talks to or sees, and that's like I always felt like I had a gift to make sure that I made that, that kid's moment or that pro's moment just the most memorable, something I either did or I wanted to do. And they try to give them that thing, and they get that. In my head. it's just one of those things that I always, yeah. I am you know, like, yeah, chalk I, up to one of those those cool moments I've had all the time doing announcing. It's fucking, it's fun. Yeah, yeah. I, you didn't announce it for. Was it you that like the first time I was on the podium at Walton in like the super mini class? I feel like it was you interviewing me. Yeah, I've been there. So my first year there was uh, 2003. Yeah. Oh, definitely. Yeah. So I, definitely. Yeah. 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 That was cool. Yeah, and I did uh, 2002 is when I started doing TV, and then 03 I started doing Walton, and I've been doing it ever since. Yeah, you you and Kyle make a good team. It's pretty yeah, it's pretty fun to watch. Yeah. Oh. Yeah, was that a tough Well I'm kind glad of... you like it, boys. I try to be entertaining. <laughs> <laughs> was that tough kind of trying to find your mojo with Kyle or had you guys worked before doing stuff like that? Uh no, at the beginning it was a little harder for sure. Uh and he you know, he's he's I don't know if you guys have ever really had conversations with him and whatnot, yeah, but yeah, for sure. he's um he's a great guy. Uh he's great personality, all that stuff. But being all the two, so like in the, the ideal world, right, the analyst and the color man, and, you know, he's supposed to have this sort of information short and stuff like that, but it, just experience it. Just it, like when I first started doing it, it was just getting more on the camera. I would just yeah. I would just go do like tra practice runs, and then I'm like, fuck it, just turn the camera on all the time. Like I don't like this practice shit. Let's just go. And, and that ended up being with him, and then I, I gave him a couple tips, like stuff that I learned from like Mark Travers. Uh, who kind of get you know guided me and gave me all my all my tips and it took us a bit but yeah man I we have some fun we have yeah. some freaking fun now in the booth actually I get a, I get along with them really well and we have a we have a good time and some good laughs and uh, I think it comes off on camera we've had a couple of people say oh you guys have some great mojo together and I'm like yeah. it's funny we <clears throat> never talk to each other during the week and, or unless it's a text message or like asking them to what's going on with transponders and that's about it. So it's literally turn the camera on and go kind of thing. So it's uh, but yeah, the first couple of years, it took a little bit of work for sure, but yeah, he got the hang of it. And like I said, same with me, once I started doing the booth stuff, it took a little bit and just the more experience you, you, you just, just like riding, right. The more you do it, the better, better you'll get at it. Yeah. yeah. But, 
You had something to say? Well, I, I was just going to, I want him to tell us about Supercross. I heard he's kind of got a, <laughs> yeah, we, some mixed opinions. <laughs> yeah, we got to get back into this. <laughs> we got to get back it into was, this. It was, it was the best thing that's ever happened to Canadian Moto. I have nothing negative to say about it. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, sometimes, like I said, but we talked beforehand there when I, I put my tweets or I talk about things, I kind of forget sometimes, you know, the work that goes into it and that's, that should never be faltered. There's always work that goes into everything. It takes a big crew and, and, you know, to do all that kind of stuff. But I just, I'm just not sold on Canadian supercross, um, being a part of our series. I just don't think our guys need it. I don't think it generates enough income. I don't think it gives enough eyes. I don't think the industry has enough money to support the series or the extra money that it might have to go in a suspension to do it, stuff like that. Uh, there's not enough time between the nationals. And um, I mean, the, the ones in Ontario, like, like I was kind of telling you before, like I had 900 entries at a race this year. There was like 30 at the Supercross. Like where the hell are the people that are yeah. supposed to buy into this? Like, is it shitty promotion? Is it people don't like the Thompsons or they don't think the Triple Crown series or they just don't want to race Supercross? And they did have a hybrid version. It was a nice amateur layout. It was fun and and stuff like that. I just it was it was it felt like I even one of my other tweets. I like rolling through the pits. I felt like I should have been playing shuffleboard. It felt like a retirement village. <laughs> it was <laughs> so quiet. Like people are just chilling in the pits, waiting to the thing. Nobody even went to riders meeting. Like the Kinger did the riders meeting. He was like he was doing it for me. <laughs> like you know, it was sort of like a there was like not quite as much respect given to the same you know, structure and guideline things. Not, not that that's a big deal. I'm just kind of making a point here on it. Um, but I'm just, and it was just, it was a weird scene and yeah, not a crap ton of pros. Our best pro in Canada, uh, maybe not full best. Pettis kept them pretty damn honest this year. Uh, he got, he got launched into the fucking atmosphere. He did that last year too, uh, didn't he? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yes. First round or something too. Yes. Yes. You know, and I last year there was, 26 guys in the 450 class and by the second night we had 13 yeah <laughs> so you know like guys are riding it again so to kind of back up talking you know i, I walked uphill both both ways but like when jsr or blair morgan uh doug dehan for the first time they went down to supercrosses in the 90s bone stock bikes let's just give her a go i remember walking into the pontiac 1998 i literally got my yz 250 and 125 i rode both classes i picked them up a week earlier in the fucking snow and I went to the race and I signed up for Pro Supercross and did it. Like, there's so much extra work that has to go into it now to be competitive. Just kind of like we were talking about how much extra work you just have to be to be a pro. That it's just, it's I, I just have a hard time justifying it, man. I just have a hard time where the extra money comes from and and the extra time and effort that these people have to do for the a, a, a small version of it. If we had 17 rounds and it made sense, like Supercross, like US, then why? Of course, but the extra cost and I, do you get to see oh, i don't know and every time i'm watching it it's like fuck this is fucking done uh. <laughs> i mean the 250 class is exciting as hell um to watch but i just i don't know i have a hard time justifying it in our spectrum of what our industry puts out as, as sales of bikes and you know person per per capita and all that kind of crap and and, and then you see it you know nobody go to the damn thing i'm just like I don't know if I, I, I know Justin and, and Cal, they got this vision, but I'm looking at that. I'm like, all right, fuck this. This is stupid. Let's focus on what works. We got outdoor <laughs> races. We got great facilities. We go to our wild roses. We go to our cam loops, these places that have been uh, pinnacles and, and, and um, iconic places really work on getting the grassroots to buy yeah. into coming to the national. Um, and one thing, I, one thing I wanted to get in before we, we lost the first time, why the fuck are the teams, not set up and selling tires, bars, grips, whatever yeah. the fuck it is on Sunday at the amateur races. Why? I always said this to Digger too. I'll use an example. He's one of my best friends. Derek Schuster, why aren't you, when you go on Saturday to Gopher, is that truck not set up on Sunday for everybody that has bought a Honda to come down to the tent, get a fucking clicker set up, get a, yeah, you got to pay your mechanic for the day, pay Justin Pecker, whatever it is, the 20 bucks an hour, whatever it is, but you're selling tires, you're, you got your mm -hmm. dealer. You got mm -hmm. gear under the tent, goggles, tear offs, whatever the hell it is. But you're making you're making that Honda rider feel like they're a part of something on that amateur day after the nationals. Why that never happens, I literally am I'm, I'm blowing my head yeah. off. I'm blow 
I used to be in those meetings and I'm just like, why don't you guys do this? Oh, well, it's hard to keep you guys want to fly home. And I'm like, well, fuck that guy. It's his job. Stay there. Yeah. I'm fucking yeah. paying you. You want to yeah. get paid? Take fucking Monday off. Like, I don't, well, I don't if, know. Just, if I, you want a job next year, we got to make some money this year. So let's sell some fucking product. <laughs> like I always yeah. like, okay, as much as, as much as, you know, somebody might have hated Stolly, loved Stolly, whatever side of the fence he went on. He did it for 30 years. He did promotion in Canada for motocross for 30 freaking years. Doing anything for 30 years, you got to give respect to them. Oh, yeah. Okay? You, you got to do it. Yes, maybe we all have thought money should have went in different areas, whatever it was, but did it for 30 years. But the one thing he always told me, and it's a promotion guideline, you anytime you get someone on the property, you it's got to be like the circus. You got the main show, which is your racing, but then you got a bearded lady over there dancing. Mm-hmm. You got a fucking a monkey on a tricycle. You got this and that. And in our world, that's little kids riding. Now this Stasic stuff. You got, um, you know, freestyle shows and that stuff. Like that didn't work. The band things didn't work. But you got to find what makes sense in our our community. Everybody likes the racing, but for the the mother that only does it because dad is a drunk, passionate drug addict on motocross. <laughs> and now he's got the two kids and the mom's like, doesn't want to be there. And then they've got like a little two year old daughter at Walton. They got the bouncy castles. It's just little things like that yeah. to make it this more circus thing. And then all of a sudden they're like, Holy shit, look at that motocross race. Oh fuck that big whip. That's pretty cool. Oh man, dirt bikes and, and tits and girls, and rock star <laughs> and monster and, you know what I mean? Like I, I just I feel like we're we're going about it the wrong way. And I am not a I again I'm not an educated promotion guy, but now I've just been going for so many goddamn years. I feel like I know what could work, but I don't think it just take the money gun and spray it. It has to come down to common sense to drive the people in to see what it is. And we aren't we are a niche sport. We are not going to uh work on fucking radio ads and TV commercials. We need to go to CW Foothills West, put posters up and everybody that comes into a customer gets a fucking $5. I don't know what it is. Well, like, this, the, the pounding the pavement that way in our sport works. We are not co- corporate angle yeah. promotional groups. Well, you already said it. We need to be paying attention to the grassroots of the sports in Canada. Cause there is nothing more than that for motocross. There's no real fan base, just watching motocross in Canada. It's all grassroots. So if we can get back to supporting the grassroots, give them some, or like sell some bars and tires and have the truck there so it feels like an event on Sunday, that's a no-brainer because that that deals directly with me, uh, my dad who's buying stuff. The vet the vet class is huge at all these amateur races because they're bringing their kids anyways. Those are the guys with money. Start selling these guys shit. It, it makes sense. Mm-hmm. Right, you gonna... know what, the, the problem with it is right that they always say, "Well, we're taking from the dealer." Well, I get that, I get it, yes, but it's not fifty-two well, weeks a year. Yeah, yeah, and okay, the... having that guy continue riding, he's gonna go back to the dealer afterwards. Exactly, like, it, exactly. You have to keep people around, otherwise, there is no sales, zero for anybody. So this, oh, we got to leave it fair for the dealership, leave it fair for the. Pro- this fairness shit ruined it ruins everything because it's not fair for anybody because nobody stays around and then there's no dollars left in the sport, you know. So yeah, you guys know what you never seen uh, live lobsters get cooked. Yeah, yeah. So there's a there's a, the Canadian theory of lobsters, right? They cut continually. They don't let one act one one will try to leave the pot and the other one pulls them right back down. The Canadian we all live like lobsters. Yeah. We yeah. don't like to let anybody get ahead. <laughs> We're not like we're not like a, yeah. we're not like America where it's like yeah dude you fucking go for it put all your money in on that fucking right let's go for it and Canada's like oh I don't know man we might better think about that one let's have let's get eight <laughs> people to discuss it instead of just one guy going you know what screw yeah. this let's do it and that's what Stolly did for thirty years and people wanted to all have their opinion and yeah. their jabs and their thoughts and then that's when things started to fall apart and then friendships got broken like he was like a dad to me I haven't talked to him in freaking well, seven years now. I think social media shows us what happens when everybody gets an opinion. Yeah, it's fucking yeah, garbage. Yeah, yeah. Nothing happens. It's stupid. Yeah, right? nothing gets done. Nothing so, gets done, right? Well, and I wanted um, to ask you. I don't know if you have any inside knowledge to this or not, but so when you're talking about the Supercross and we should focus more on motocross here in Canada, do you know what any of the ratings or viewership was like for the Supercross rounds? Is it bigger than the motocross stuff? Like, just curious if anybody knows that. 
Unfortunately, I don't. Uh, and I actually ask both Justin and Kyle. I ask after every round uh, for those numbers. I think they're called the Nelson ratings. I yeah, think is what yeah. the name of them are. Yeah. And um, I, I don't know if they we just don't get them or we don't have them or they don't want to give them up. Yeah. But literally, I have no idea how many people are watching our stuff on the show. Yes, he gives numbers to the manufacturers and stuff like that. And they, from when I talk to my buddies at those things, they sound like they're pretty good. Are they bullshit? Are they not bullshit? Yeah. Kind of thing like that. So um, I, I, to be honest, I have no freaking clue uh, if it's been if it's better or worse yeah. or the same. I feel like it's probably worse. You got to think. Well, I, I'm I like, know. I, I didn't, know. I didn't watch any Supercross. I watched all the outdoors. I was well, pretty a grassroots the, guy. The 250 right? class is pretty damn good, Jared. Okay? I know. Supercross? I just was busy, bro. I tell you what, that part was pretty damn good. <laughs> yeah, I watched. I watched Supercross. I was excited to watch it. So what you're saying? But is... I knew the point. I knew what was going on with points and like. Yeah, I knew yeah. It was kind of like. So there's the other thing too. Like if you dive in in you know six rounds and you don't really understand it, you know, and we're talking points and this and that, like you're just you're out. I'm out. Like you know, kind of thing. Yeah. Uh, that's why I always try to when I'm doing TV stuff. I try to always hit home every single race. What points mean? Where they go? Why they're doing this? What? How this finishes? Overalls to try to make it as bl- as as simple as possible for someone new. If they were tying into it, they could be like, oh, okay, okay. So you get three points above if you win, or you, you know, kind of thing like that. But it, it gets hard over twelve races, yeah. and yeah, but um, the uh, it gets a little confusing if you don't. But I think that's where we do a, or you guys do a pretty good job of like educating the viewer without making them feel like they're idiots like sometimes down in the states they'll say something where it's like well an idiot picked up on that you didn't need to say that you know like whether it's the color of the bike or i don't know whatever people get all worked up about these days but i find up here we kind of it's more level-minded i don't know if that's like like if you're watching it you kind of know what's going on well they're gonna say the thing to the new viewer that's like okay here's how points are sitting and and here's how points are scored but they don't dumb it down so much where it's like Okay, fuck. What are we teaching this to a grade one kid? Yeah, I feel like Supercross you know? is worse than outdoors for that kind of stuff, yeah. right? No. Well, up here, I guess it's like a pretty dedicated group of viewers too. Like it's people that are already in the sport. And I no, but I mean, know. even when you watch uh, Kyle and Ryan on on TV, right? And they'll they'll mention some of those things for the new viewers. I feel like it's still like speaking to them like they're people, not idiots. Idiots, yeah. <laughs> As as it, sometimes when you listen to some of these other broadcasts, you're like, "Fuck, do they just think everybody's stupid as shit or what?" Because it's not, you know, rocket science. Some of this stuff. Well, again, you guys, like you said, you're pretty avid pulp followers. Or Steve always brings it up. Like, we're not getting Fortune 500 companies buying into our series. Why are we trying to talk like we're all wearing suits and ties and shit? We are mud slinging, beer drinking, <laughs> fucking oil burning, sniffing, painting, fucking whatever people. <laughs> And I you think that I mean? attracts like just, fans. Yeah, exactly. Like, yeah, we, damn it. Why wouldn't we want the guy that owns Coca-Cola to come in? Like, yeah, okay, here's $10 billion to put into the <laughs> motorsports community. Like, just, it ain't going to fucking happen. No. It ain't going to happen, you know? Let's just, let's appeal to the people that keep watching us and allow their passion to spit through. So when Jared turns, tunes in, holy fuck, that was amazing. And he goes and has coffee with someone that's not really into it. And he's like, you just start talking about it. You're like, and the guys are like, "Oh, where where can I watch this?" That's how we sell it. That, mm-hmm. in my opinion, is how we sell what we're doing and how we can make it grow by utilizing the stupid passion drug addict we'd be talking about <laughs> and portray it to these new people that we bump into at work or down the road or, uh, you know, in the in the supermarket, wherever the hell you meet. Like for now, I I meet, um, my kid Riley. Uh, his there's like four kids in his class that just got dirt bikes this summer. And he brings like pictures. They do like a picture day and he does a dirt bike picture. Anyway, I got these four parents like, oh, so you're into dirt bikes? And I'm like, oh, yeah, hey, there's a track over here you can ride publicly. You can yeah. pay. And we have races. Come on out. I fucking, I'll take your money all day long. <laughs> no, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> kind of thing. But like, I think that, I think there's so much more value in that sort of face to face interaction than, you know, what the old, uh, you know, even on the social networking thing, man, yeah, I can make, you can make up a real nice design and do an Insta banger. But who the fuck is actually seeing it? it? You know, who's seeing it? All moto people, really. Yeah, and you're hoping that they're sharing it and tagging it or doing whatever. But Christ Almighty, I can barely get anybody to do shit like that now. Oh, man, I don't know how to use my phone. I'm like, you're fucking 18. You don't know how to use your phone? Are you kidding me? <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? You're right out of touch. You're never going to get laid. <laughs> 
so so what do you think with the series with like as going forth like what is the title sponsor looking like like is there anything in the pipeline or uh are we just going to continue um, on or well i i mean i definitely think they're they're working on some things they've had some positive talks back with the old call monsters kind of been rumored red bull has been rumored again um this year there was no title sponsor parts canada was the biggest uh um, other than the manufacturers, and I don't even believe that they put in as much as they did in the past. Um, so, like back, for instance, if you use uh, the, um, I want to say it was 09, 09, 10 were pretty big years for the CMRC side of things uh, when the Monster Money came in and all that kind of stuff. Like it was, it was like a two point six, two point eight million dollar draw as far as sponsor and and uh ticket sales all that kind of stuff throughout the year it almost i think it almost hit like three mil i was pretty close with stolly back then so the numbers were big like that doesn't seem like a lot of money in a sense but it was really it was a good inf like inf influx into things and um i i'd be hard pressed to see if we got half a million dollars in sponsorship right now just the way things are and looking at it and stuff like that so i really hope that the title comes these guys are hard working they want it to go they this year was the cleanest, in my opinion, that it's ever been. And I don't mind, like, I, I've, I've, you know, I've talked to Justin and Kyle. I don't mind. It's not talking shit. I'm opinionated. I'm 43. Like, I, I think I know a good thing from a bad thing and stuff like that. So I tell those guys, you know, straight up, I'm like, I think that's dumb. This is dumb. But, I mean, again, it's your series. It's everybody's got an opinion. And um, I think maybe sometimes they may have pushed me aside of that now because I'm a little too honest with it and i'm fine with that i don't do the mrc job anymore because i just i didn't like the way things were going and where it was going and i said you guys can handle it do it to yourselves and and uh, that's why i took ammo by itself um but um this year was solid they did a, they did a good job as as sometimes i'm like how the hell is this even working and then it's on tv that the results are in this is working everything's working so i believe that this year will be i think someone's sitting on the fence that that can buy into it. whether whether it's gonna be a lot of money or a little bit of money i'm not sure because Another little theory I have is why is uh, Mr. Yamaha and Mr. Honda and Kawi and, and uh, well, not Suzuki, but, you know, uh, why are those the, the Japanese ones? Why are the other the three Japanese going to give more money when they have been selling all their bikes anyway? They don't mm -hmm. have to do as much marketing and they don't have to buy TV and commercial and stuff because people, they're still having a series. Yeah. So I know we wouldn't think like that, but that's the way those guys think. Right, because even though we know our buddy at Yamaha Canada, hey, he's not the boss, right? He's not the boss of where the budget and the money and all that stuff gets spent. He still has another guy he's got to talk to, and then he gets down. Uh, but KTM Husky Gas Gas, they're different, right? They can start the manufacturer plan up, turn the key on again, and make more product, make more bikes, um, right? Where the the Japanese aren't like that, and they're selling. So it's going to be interesting to see how that works next year. In my opinion, I know that Yamaha, for instance, is like put in for a lot more money into motocross and motorsports. Um, so hopefully they, well, they've asked for it. I don't know if they'll get it from, from the, across the pond, but um, I, I don't know. I mean, I'd love to see one of the energy drinks come back again. I like, I, I could see monster jumping back on it, but I know there was a, a bit of a bad falling out when they left the series before. And obviously rockstar is gone now. And who else is going to jump on it? You got any friends out there that, you know, you get Mr. Subway or uh, car star. <laughs> Car star? Car, yeah, car star. Speaking of car star, that guy, our president, used to uh, work at the circus. <laughs> so the circus thing is true. <laughs> no, you have to do what the circus did. Like, that's the whole thing. He's not wrong with the circus thing. It's right. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you got to bring people out to yeah, see make an event. more than just the niche thing to it. It's a, it's gotta be a theme park mentality. That's right. Yeah. Cause yeah. not everybody that's coming through the gate actually wants to be there. They probably that girlfriend that would rather be on her phone or something. Maybe she doesn't want to be there. Maybe there's a, there's a, a woman over there doing nails or something. Well, I don't know. That fucking sounds stupid. <laughs> well, to well, me, but, there's lots of people that go to Disneyland that don't ride roller coasters. Exactly. There's other shit to do, yeah. right? Like there's more yeah. than just one thing. Well, that's what was so cool about Walton this year. Like, as chaotic as it was, I mean, there was lots going on. And there was yeah. a lot of people there, and there was a lot of stuff to watch. It was, I thought it was good. Yeah. No, if it had pulled off smooth, uh, you know, the injuries on the Saturday at, at my event was the one that kind of sort of put a little kibosh and stuff. No, everything was just an accident. It was just bad luck kind of stuff, but... I think it. I think for sure it was a neat idea, and uh, 
if it all went off, like you guys were going to be able to go watch some different things and check out some different stuff and all on one property. I, I think the idea had some merit for sure. And I, I guarantee it's happening again next year. Yeah. Um, so hopefully, uh, I think it just, because it was literally two weeks after, uh, when we kind of got announced, we could be reopen and everybody was excited. So like, it was, it was huge. Uh, I, I it, it's what you want, but I don't think every single a f- facet of it all was prepared for every little thing that went on. I mean, the motocross side, it got pulled off, but the flat track, they got the shaft because there wasn't, we couldn't maybe get equipment down in the areas and stuff like that. And anyway, now it's a learning thing. They'll, they'll get it better for sure. But I agree. It was at looking at it. I'm like, Holy crap, this is a busy weekend. And, and, uh, this is going to be gnarly. And, but, um, it's exactly what we're talking about. You got to have a circus. You got to have more things going on to get more eyes out there to see what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, I don't think I've seen Walton that busy since like the good old days, you know? It's been a while. Probably yeah. since the last time um, I got smacked on the wrist by Judy Lee, Mama Lee, when she got mad at me for throwing an after party. <laughs> <laughs> I got many, I got many Walton after party stories about stuff like that. But yeah, no, man. It, it was big this year. Well, not a good year, I think. And I still actually have two events there myself um, uh, coming up. So hopefully they, hopefully they're still the same. But yeah, it was it was a good year for the Transcan and the, and and that event. And uh, but I think next year, July long weekend, you'll see the same thing going on there for sure. Maybe you can't remember any of this, uh, but uh, what year was the best Walton after party? Oh uh, man, oh. Well, and why? 99 was nine, <laughs> 99 might not have been the biggest, but it might have been the best from the security. And I was the first rider in the history to ever get fined by the CMRC. <laughs> so that was a good one. Chris Lee and I got in almost a full fist fight right in the pits in the middle of like every pro rider because we were having loud music. And all this. back then they had this hand around people's fires and like just death stare you until you basically shut it down or went to bed. And, you know, we're all like, fuck you, and yelling and stuff. And then Chris <laughs> Lee came out of nowhere. And me and him, of course, I get pulled out as the as the voice because I'm just that guy, I guess. And uh, we get in this big battle, blah, blah, blah. We stay up till 3 in the morning drinking. And next thing you know, Paul Kingsley's knocking on my door at 6 a.m. at my trailer door. He's like, Galdi, we got to have a meeting. And uh, <laughs> I'm like, what the hell is this all about? I went in and it was uh, like there was like the CMRC board of directors back then. And I had to like speak my case in front of six people and <laughs> hung over and, shit. Yeah, they, yeah. Oh yeah. Hung over shit. And I had to pay a $400 fine, uh, if till, uh, or I couldn't race on the Sunday. <laughs> so I pay, I paid the fine, canceled the check on Monday and Stolly Stolly took it out of my series purse like two weeks later. <laughs> yeah. So oh. that was, that was one of them. But I mean, uh, um, the early millennium ones are pretty good. Oh, one, two, threes, man. Like the end of the year, they were, there were some banger parts and a lot of people, big fires, fist fights, broken car, <laughs> this and that. We stole, we stole one year of Matt Lee was, I want to say it might've been Oh four. We, they had a beer sponsor and they had a beer trailer with like kegs in it and stuff. And it was on the, the opposite side that we're on now. So the opposite side, um, but we had the. The pro pit, the, the opposite side now, it what used to be the amateur pits, and then a beer tent and stuff like that for the moms and dads and the parents and whatnot. And then the pro pits was on the other side. Well, we threw the pit, the party over there. Well, me and Matt Lee went and uh, grabbed a four a four wheeler, cut the lock off the beer trailer, and towed the beer trailer down the road <laughs> all the way over to the pro pits, and then everybody drank for free till the wee morning. And I guess it ended up costing Chris Lee a bit of money. He wasn't very happy. With it. But, uh, I did it. I did it with his son, so I felt like I could get away with it. So, um, but yeah, there was there was some gnarly stuff there, um, gnarly parties for sure. That um, not one in particular was would stick. Actually, Dustin Hayes, you guys remember? You guys oh remember yeah, that, yeah, right? yeah, sure. Yeah. He steals a golf cart in the middle of the the fire, middle of the party, and I don't know if you guys ever kind of noticed it, but. It would be so freaking dark at Walton out in the middle of the field when the party's going on. If you went out 15 yards, like out past the, you couldn't see anything. You couldn't see nothing. It was so dark and kind of walking pitch black. Well, he steals a freaking golf cart and just runs it right into someone's rental vehicle. <laughs> like, and none of us even knew until we hear this big bang and we're and all of a sudden we're like, what's that? 
get a four wheeler shine lights. There's Dustin running from the golf cart, <laughs> and the thing is like endowed into the side of this guy's rental car and stuff like that. So, lots of lots of fun fun stories and and good memories of doing that stuff. It was always a good ender bender, um, for sure. How many uh, at all those parties? How many emotional new f- speeches were there? <laughs> Uh, he only did it the one, one year, like 2010 or whatnot, I think. <laughs> he didn't have a shirt on. Uh, Sounds but ne- there's never, yeah, there's never, never too many of them, but he was always, he was always good to have there at the parties. That's for sure. <laughs> hey, it's been, it's on my, it's been on my mind. I got to ask you what, uh, I've, I've only heard one opinion from one person. What, uh, what was all the drama with, uh, the 46 and the 22. Oh, they freeze on them. Say again, it's cutting out again here. Yeah. Oh, I was just going to say that, uh, what, uh, what was, what was the deal with the 46 and the 22? All right. Say again, there we go. You hear us now? Oh, it looks like he's stuck. Oh, shoot. Yeah, oh. go ahead. Hear us now? You good? I can I can hear you. Yeah, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Yeah. What? Uh. So it's been you on my mind. Hear me. Oh. Yeah. No, we can hear. You. We just. I think we got a bit of a lag going okay. on right now. Um. Yeah. So it's been on my mind for a bit. Uh. And I want to ask somebody else that was there. And you're kind of you're in the know. Uh. What was the deal with uh forty six and twenty two? Um. I would say forty six was in the wrong. Um, after the fact, if you look at the way the incident went on the track, I think 26 kind of got himself stuck there. He kind of high sided and went over the berm and yeah, he was the red plate, but it's racing. It was the second corner. Yeah. Um, so, and then, but then, yeah, right behind the camera, literally as we're like, okay, we'll be right back for commercial. They got into a full shoving match right in front of the stage where the, where the stage was. They gave each other like four or five shoves and then, um, Kevin Tyler kind of got in there. Daryl Murphy got in there, kind of broke it all up. And then I didn't hear the podium thing, but I got it told to me afterwards because I was doing TV kind of down below. Oh, no. Oh, but my team was like clapping for Gibbs when he was on the podium by himself. And yeah, way to go, Tyler. You got lots of fans out there. And they didn't boo him. I don't remember hearing any or hearing anybody say they booed, but it was it was a bit, I don't know, a little childish on the MX 101 part a little bit. I don't think Kevin felt too great the next day. But then, then I heard... So uh, I, I get there. That, that was the Friday. I get there the Saturday morning, and the first group I see is Ryder McNabb, Sam Gaynor, um, and about four or five other ones. And they're like, did you hear what happened to Gibbs? I'm like, no. They're like, he was sleeping in the MX-101 trailer, and they kicked him out. They threw all his clothes in his mattress <laughs> on, the, on the ground. And I'm like, no way. They would have done that. So it wasn't actually the MX-101 trailer. I guess he was sleeping in uh, Jamie Powell's trailer. Yeah. And Jamie Powell was – not having it and they i guess he said you got you can't stay here tonight or something like that so we ended up sleeping in piccolo sprinter oh no um, way yeah so yeah a little little bit of drama between the uh the teenagers Shoot. <laughs> yeah oh yeah, well was good good stuff i won't say anything because i don't want to sound biased but shoot shoot that's not fun keelan Come on, get a little, the hell, get a like, little bias. Take Martin. a page out of Goldie's book that was and just the say it. Lamest, that was the lamest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> hey, hey, man, that's, that's, my, that's my team, man. Those are my boys. <laughs> well, yeah, I know, but I think in that instance, they didn't handle that situation the greatest. But, hey, we've done stupid shit before. Christ almighty, God, I could fucking, I got tons of stories of doing dumb shit. Yeah, no, but that's I, I think I think after the fact, it was one of those heated moments, but I think on the track, I, I don't see why Marco – Got so mad at the 22. I think it was Marco's. Marco went over the berm, man. Like he didn't even, they didn't even hit each other. Yeah, no, I, I saw it. It was, it, yeah, there was nothing dirty about it. Hey, I will, man, I will say though, like, man, Gibby was impressive this year. The Super yeah. Guys, yeah. He was yeah. so good. Like all around, I think outdoors, Supercross, just to like walk in kind of cold, man, he was on it. I would, uh, I have to agree that Supercross was the extra good. I mean, I think he got like a seventh at one of the outdoors there. So that was pretty impressive. But Supercross, he he won the very first main event. And I don't think any, well, 
I mean, you know, growing up at the Future West Barnes, he did do a few super crosses. I think his confidence was high coming in for sure, but I wouldn't have picked picked him to win, that's for sure. Yeah, no, he was like he was insane. It was good. Watching him, yeah, watching him on the live stream there. I was like, damn, like Yeah, even uh Rosina too, like on your guys' bikes. That was a kind of a surprise too. It made it kind of a nice little story going with the series too, because again, you know, it wasn't that deep of a field with a lot of guys missing and stuff. But um yeah, Gibbs was Gibbs was good. It was it was fun to watch for sure. And he was he's pretty spicy with the guys, not just the Canel incident. He did some you know, cutting down in turns and stuff like that. Stuff again with the supercross not being a regular thing, not everybody's used to almost getting T boned or being that close in race action when it comes to that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, and like like you said about Rosina too, like he, yeah, I think he stepped up and he, even at a couple of rounds, he was giving Welton a run for his money. Oh yeah, for sure. There was one there. Welton couldn't keep the rear end traction at all. Uh, I think it was the the sad the final Saturday main event of the first weekend, so round two. But yeah, Weston was faster. He just couldn't really kind of get close enough to make a pass. He but kept catching up, and then Welton would maybe scrub a little better or be a little faster in the straights but yeah in the turns he couldn't even hang on to the bike is he was losing the rear end yeah, i don't think it was a flat but he's having some struggle but and it made it yeah like i said it made it some good storylines for the for the series being sort of quiet not having dylan not having you not having moff not having pettis in the 450 class it was pretty uh pretty after the top three guys it was or top four guys it was quite the gap to fill you think uh we see jess go south this year so, latest rumor, again, you guys are Paul fans, was that he was going to go to club. And he was getting a club ride, but I ha- I think that that is now sizz- or fizzled because I would assume that the Canadian side of his deal, not kibosh that, but maybe said, no, 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 we can't let you do that. We'll try to figure it out. I think he'll go back down and do Supercross on a KTM again this winter. No. Not a Canadian I, have no, I have no insight on that at all or talk to him. Um, I did talk to Steve and Phil Nicoletti a little bit about it. And Nicoletti, was he sort of said the club thing was talked about. So I, I think you guys know, but um, the club team has a Canadian partner. Yeah, Jeffrey Scott. Holmes, yeah. Right? Yeah, oh, yeah, you would know it. Keelan, that you're right with Scott. So I think yeah. there was a bit of a – I think actually Newf said that Scott Jeffrey uh, offered McNabb a deal and Piccolo a deal on the Sunday at uh, Walton. Yeah, I heard the I heard the Piccolo thing, not uh, Ryder though. So, did you hear you guys hear the other KTM one that was pretty sick on Sunday morning about uh, about Piccolo with KTM Canada? Yeah, that they gave him the ride for next year. But they also said if you go out and win the championship, we'll pay you the KTM factory bonus, which apparently was thirty grand, if you sign the contract right now before the day starts. Oh, wow. I was wondering because I seen him. He walked. He when he collected his number one plate, he walked it with a Red Bull can in his hand. I'm like what? Yeah. <laughs> so, Red Bull can. And, and I I went and confirmed it with Al Dick. I'm like, hey dude, you know what? Our our little industry, we're always talking shit. I'm like, fuck it. I'm gonna go ask. He's like, yeah, they did it, man. They came in. It was like seven o'clock in the morning. They said we'll give you th- the thirty grand bonus if you win the title if you sign the contract right now for next year. And I guess he signed it and. The kid went out and freaking won, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. that's pretty sick. Like, that, you know, even yeah. more pressure on it and stuff. And he went out and he did exactly what he needed to do. He was so impressive on that day. And then when I heard that, I'm like, holy shit, that's freaking cool. Yeah, yeah that's so. impressive. He kept it together on that day, too. Cause, like, I remember watching at Deschambeau and the little, like, kind of spaz out that he had there in what, on Monday? I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah, the back man. break, right? Yeah, I was like, oh, man, you don't want to lose the championship this way. And then yeah. just to watch Matt Walton, he was dialed in. Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, from what, you know, his MO was, like we kind of talked about a little at the beginning of the show, about how he's a bit of a time bomb. Um, his whole career, he's just, the raw speed is unbelievable, and then he just have a spectacular crash. And this year he was, um, God, he was legit. He looked like a, like a 22 to 25-year-old fourth, fifth-year pro out there just knowing what he needed and like everything points to club MX. I don't know if that is the whole reason, but they took him mm-hmm. under the wing. Nicoletti helped him out a little bit and stuff guys down there. They, gave, they were able to kind of keep him more reserved and calm. And they, the kids, are, what is he? 19 and won a championship already. And, you know, I hopefully uses some of his money to get a haircut. <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Pretty impressive. Yeah, it, yeah. Like impressive. And I mean, I don't know if you guys know Melly's a, 
he's a pretty quiet reserve kid. Even mom and dad, they're very quiet reserve people. And I actually gave him a hard time the year before, no, I guess it would have been two years before when he went, he won all the intermediate championships at Walton, right? And I'm doing the podium interviews and he was just like, yeah, yeah. I felt good. Good corner. Yep. You know, he just wasn't very talkative. And I pulled him aside after like, Hey man, I go like, just feel free. Like, let's chat up there. Like I want, you know, sponsors, people need to see your personality. He's like, I'm just not really like that. You know, and his dad kind of got mad at me that I'm like, no, you need to be like that. Like just come out of your shell. Like I'm giving you the avenue to do this. And his dad kind of got mad. I'm like, Hey, I'll help him if he wants. Like I'll help him be confident on the mic. And I don't know if he did practice him, but this year on the mic, he was so much more confident. He was, he was willing to talk about the race and even say uncomfortable things. And yeah, it was a, it was a cool transformation to see in uh, Canadian moto. I, like, honestly, it was, I could rel- I could put it in the same terms of when Fasciotti found his way. Um, as a young kid, he came in with all the hot shot, and he was the kid, and it looked like everything was good. And he he went to Richmond. He didn't like training. He didn't like this and blah blah blah. And then he uh, got the Blackfoot ride, and everything just kind of turned around. He found you know he liked training. JSR helped him, gave him guidance, and then boom, he becomes a six time champion. Now you know Pickle's got a long way for that, but it. Uh, same kind of thing, just a very quiet, shy thing, and came out of the shell this year. And God Almighty, it was it was fun to watch. Yeah, we got like quite the young crop of Canadian talent right now. Like with McNabb, he's super young. We got like uh, Piccolo, uh, Benix, really talented too. He's yeah. actually pretty surprising. He's really good. Uh, I feel like I'm missing another young kid. No. But, well, but, even War- Warren and Canella are like 21. They're still young. Yeah, they're still yeah. young, yeah, right? They feel like vets you know, now, though. Yeah. <laughs> no, right, 100%. They feel like they've been around for so long. And that almost kind of goes to the spoilness of that we have. Tanner Ward got that KTM Super Mini ride, right? He was kind of in the news and, and sort of like now he's – you hear his name more, so you're like expecting it to be at the front or all the time like kind of thing uh, when, you, when you see it. It's like the Adam Cincerello, like he's – was a champion from right when he got on a bike. Like he should be winning now kind of thing. Like these, these kind of storylines that work like that. So yeah, you think they're older than they, than they really are. Cause you've heard their name for so long. Yeah, for sure. Uh, what, right. the, what surprised you more that, uh, that Piccolo was able to put it all together for the championship or that sky racing was able to put it together for the whole championship. Huh. Um, <laughs> I, 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 you know what? I'm going to have to go on the sky side of things. Um, I Piccolo had such raw speed, everything was there if, if he if he did it. But Sky's track record hadn't been that great as far as you know bikes DNF in or problems and all that kind of stuff. Last year with the Surratt kid, there was numerous DNFs. So um, when that that team kind of meshed, I was like, oh shit, this is gonna be a you know just going on stats alone, and it's gonna be a pretty tough year for Piccolo, but. They pulled it off, but yeah, if I if at the beginning of the year I would have said that it would have been more of a sky problem than a pickle problem. Yeah, well, apparently I was talking to Paul L- LRX that was building the motors yeah. for L- for for Piccolo. I guess after that Gopher Dunes win, KTM came in and they like they gave him a spec motor from from the states, yeah. and he they like they it was a sealed motor. They weren't allowed to they marked everything, so they weren't allowed to open it. All of that. Yeah. So hmm. I guess that's cool, but as so then is that so is there an asterisk against Aldex champion? No, no, not at all. I don't I don't say it no, all. No, like, not at all. No, not at all. I'm just saying, but that's what that's the kind of stuff that that's how that builds now. Oh well, you know, KTM got the title because they helped him out and blah 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 kind of thing. But you know what? They Al found a way to get good bikes this year and Paul, that guy's like that guy builds a sick motor. I don't know does. if you've ever got one of his, but oh, his bikes look like they work pretty freaking good, man. Yeah, Paul's and, a good dude. Uh, and um and then they they jacob you know when he's on the track the bike stayed together and jacob did his job like you can't ask for anything else so it's uh well done well done all around on that one yeah i think al gets a bit of a bad rap but he like he does really have a good he like he he has the best of intentions it doesn't maybe always come across the right way but well he's not born in the damn instagram fucking era yeah. of, of talking and shit you know he's the guy that guy raced against the most badass canadian racer ever and beat him Yep. Uh, at times, you know what I mean? Like he was a, mm-hmm. one of the, he's an, he's a legend in our sport, but they grew up at, was like, you know, beat the shit out of yourself, riding three classes a day, 500s, 125s on those bikes were fucking garbage. You know, they come from that era of like, it's better to just be tough and fight your way through it. than like, Oh, this setting and this computer, we can dial the fuel in now and shit like that kind of thing. So I could get it for sure. The first few years, it might've been a little bumpy. But now my question is, 
does he get more support to replace Piccolo or and and a little semi rumor from that last Supercross was Benick was kind of searching around, um, and he left he left the day before the last race. He didn't ride the last round. Um, so does now is Al like he's got a he's got a, a proven record now. He's got a championship. Like not a lot of teams can say that, right? Hey. So you know who who's left that he could hire, and does he have enough money to go out and get somebody that could beat? Piccolo or McNabb or Sanai or Canal Award. Like, who's left after that? Like, like a Quinn Amiot or a Jared Petruska? Are you ever going to make a comeback here? Put the welder down, bud. Let's go racing again. No, nah, I'm full time welder now. Full time <laughs> welder podcast. I'm, I'm done ta- chasing the but, dream. You know, but, and again, does our if our country goes back to normal, does the American market open back up for a guy like that? Yeah. Or is it better to keep the dollar in Canada? Like, Derek Schuster right now, all his riders are Canadian and he's winning races and titles. Mm hmm. Yeah. So you know, it's there's such a fine line right now. It'd be an interesting winner to see how it works with the sky and if he gets more money. But he just lost Piccolo. Is KTM being like, oh, here's a bunch more money, man. We'll help you out to get a guy to beat Piccolo. <laughs> yeah. Well, that makes sense. From what I heard, it kind of sounds like he's going to be like kind of the B team or bringing kind of kids into the program. Okay. But that, that's just what I heard. But I don't. I, don't, I have no further insight than that. If you're if you're Al Dick, is that a slap to the face after you just won the title this year? I don't think you can can compete with a factory program, right? I don't know. He just did. Well, yeah, he just did, but that's because they didn't want to hire Piccolo because he seemed like a time bomb at the time, maybe, right? Well, maybe now he can crop up some other kid to, to do it or something. But I'm just saying, like, now the proof is there. It, it can be done, right? It, just, it got proven. It did, I guess they gave him a motor sort of halfway through, but I, I don't know if he would have needed it. Yeah. No, I don't think he would have you know? needed it at all, but – I just think that why would why would KTM give him the money if they have a semi yeah. already going right? Like I don't know. I think uh, I think Al will find some money elsewhere. I know Sky gives them good money. Yeah, and I know that uh, like the Andrew Westland or whatever with Sky is a he's a pretty like from what I hear he's a pretty cutthroat guy. So the fact that they won a championship, they might want to keep that going, and they, well, they might dump uh, more money into it. Solid rumor from last from uh, the rounds. I won't uh, say who it was, but Sky gave zero money this year. Really, really pulled out last minute. Whatever the amount was, they pulled it all. Everything last no minute, way. like two weeks, no way. two weeks before the first round, and uh, yep. And Al honored the deal with the graphics and all that stuff, I guess, like that. And but uh, yeah, it was a pretty solid rumor from a good source. It wasn't just some bantering or like that. I don't know those sky people at all. I've never met them whatsoever. I, don't, I know it's a helicopter company, but the guys that do MVP, um, they were graphics on the bike. I'm trying to think of the damn sponsors. Ah, oh, shit, I should know this one guy was at the race. But MVP are the guys that ended up picking up most of the tablet. And they're like, oh, shit. I can't remember the name of it. They're, they have nothing to do with Moto either. They're like yeah, MVP. realtors or something. or yeah. Oh, Vista Properties. That's it. There it is. Yeah, Vista. That's yep. it. Vista yeah, Properties. They're, they're, That's it uh, yeah, I'll pick those guys up uh, the second year of the team. Yeah, they ended up, I guess, fronting quite a bit more of the bill this year. So. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. It's kind of weird. But uh, so anything else you've heard about for like silly season stuff where people might be going for next year or anything like that? Um, I went under the tent and asked Chad Goodwin if they, you know everything was good. And I did talk to Gerhard Huber. But I talked to Chad Goodwin, who's the manager of the Cowie team, to say, hey, is everything good? You guys coming back? Because I, I, I find it kind of weird to have a Canadian team with an American staff, mm-hmm. um, like a manager. Not that I don't care about the jobs and all that kind of stuff. I just – like, why not just do it – like, why not have a Canadian guy do that job? So I was curious. Because he like, – like, circuit stuff, too, and he's got good connections. Um, and he's like, yeah, I think so. Everything looks good. And then I had another guy tell me, like, oh, they're – they're going to look to get out there. They need a title sponsor because they lost monster. So, but then monster was kind of rumored to maybe come back with them and the series together. So I, I don't know if they're solid enough. It's always kind of skeptical here in Canada. And um, it's very easy to bullshit somebody in such a small industry too. So, uh, but um, I, I mean, hopefully, hopefully it all works out, but that was, that was about it. That was the only thing. And the other, Oh, I said the Yamaha thing. Yamaha seems like they want to be a little more aggressive coming into next season with some, with some support on grassroots right up to pro level racing. So that's cool. Yeah. Yeah. So I'll throw this one at you guys right now talking money and shit. So I'll give it to Jared first. Jared, you've got, uh, uh, 250 grand. 
I'll give you 250 grand. You can have a rider in each class. You can pick your manufacturer and every rider's for sale, but they, they raced in Canada just this past year. Who are you buying? 200, 250 grand. Gee, this is on the spot. Jesus. Yeah. Um, you had any manufacturer, any racer, 450, 250, and they're all available. But they had to race this past summer going into next season. So I need, what, two or three riders? How many riders? Two or three? Well, I got to say that again. Cut it on me. Sorry. You need, I need two or three riders? How many did you say? Oh, fuck. Now it's cutting out again. <laughs> two or, how many riders? How many riders? Oh, damn it. One, one per class. Let's start off. Okay. Um, shit. Um, I'll go Pettis in 450 class. And I'll give him 70 grand. Well, you don't have to tell them what you're paying. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> you think, you think, you know, I thought you're talking I, like nice. hard numbers. Okay, I'll go Pettis. Yeah, just just you know you get you got to get a rig and all that kind of. Stuff. Yeah, okay, you got a two hundred fifty grand. You got to you know and bikes. Don't forget your bikes. Don't okay, your bikes okay. Further. So I got two fifty for like the bikes. The well, should the manufacturers not be providing the bikes? Um, no, you gotta buy everything, man. Okay, I gotta buy you're everything. You're buying the team. You're you're, you're, you're Al Dick. Dick. I'm Al Dick. Al Dick I'm Al Dick. Year. So I'm, buy yeah, I'm buying. Al Dick. I'm buying a box van. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay, I I'll you're go. Just picking the riders. Yeah. Okay, I'll go. Um, two fifty is probably not <laughs> enough to get two title guys, right? Um, so I'll go Pettis. Oh. I'll go Pettis, and I'll go. Um, I'll go Mc McNabb. Mm -hmm. That works. Keelan, he didn't pick his bikes. I don't have to pick my bikes. Oh yeah, what, what color? Yeah, no, what, what bikes? We're going what red. Color? We're going red. And Pattis will just jump on that, eh? Oh yeah, hundred <laughs> percent. <100%. laughs> Can I get that seventy grand up front, Jared? Or... <laughs> Uh, yeah, what do you think, Caitlin? If you were like a team manager this year, like that, uh, like whatever, the two fifty grand, I just pulled that out of my ass, but. Um, who would you pick? Would I have f factory status and factory options? That's my question. You're in a box fan. <laughs> what do you mean factory <laughs> staff? No, like factory status. Like, do I have like access to factory parts, factory motors? No, 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 no. It's fucking Canada, man. Like, well, hey, oh, no, oh, hey, KTM does. Well, yeah, okay, yeah, I guess that's different. I suppose with it. Okay, so no, you're running off production stuff. And you can know get skid to do it or whatever. Like, hmm. Jesus Christ, you guys! This wasn't a loaded fucking question. <laughs> it's a, it's a, it's just. I was just okay. What's I, the I, motive? What's the motive? Are we going for? Are we going for champion? Whatever you can accomplish with two hundred fifty grand, grand you you like, come on. I mean, so El Dick accomplished a fucking championship with probably one hundred and fifty. Probably he they, he probably made money. Al Dick? Yeah. No chance. They probably paid him zero chance. Not what I heard. But, uh... All right, Keelan, screw you, Chris. Give me your thoughts. Go ahead, Chris. <laughs> well, we're bringing RM Army back to Canada, so it's a Suzuki team. <laughs> of course. And uh... well, okay, now your bu budget of two to fifty grand is like a million. For the other guys. <laughs> uh, we'll go with. Uh, let's see. Start two fifty class. I me, like, uh, pick me, uh, and pick uh, me, and Keelan, <laughs> me and Keelan. <laughs> I like the McNabb pick, but he might be a little young still and need another year or two. Well, you got to develop these. Young okay, guys. so so let's go with uh, let's go with Ward because I still think he's got more left in the tank. I don't think he showed everything he's got this year. And uh, four fifty class. Colton Fasciati. Man, Fasciati still rips, and I'm sure. Yeah. Uh, man, that's a that's a tough one there. Pettis yeah. is a lot. More or a lot less likely to hit the ground than right. He broke his back. Well, I guess he did. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, that's a tough. No, I'm not one. laughing at the back broke part. Right? Just yeah, the fact that he didn't really remember that. <laughs> Shit, T Dags. T Dags. There you go. Yeah. Someone who erased the nations for us. A couple of veterans, Warden T Dags. Yeah. Keelan, you're up. I think Keelan. <laughs> For some reason, you can't pick yourself. No, uh, for some reason, I don't know why, but I really like uh, Julian Bennick. 
He's a good. He seems like a good dude. I think ah. he. I think maybe in a couple of years we could see him have a rise like we did out of Piccolo. Um, and for four fifties, <clears throat> who who do we got? We got Dylan, Jess, Parker, Cole, Eel, Parker Eels, Cole Thompson, Cole Thompson, Moff. Uh. Who is the Cali guy this year? Uh, what's Welton. Welton, yeah. Justin Bogle. Tyler. Liam O'Farrell. <laughs> Liam O'Farrell. <laughs> uh, Jesus, Keelan. I don't know. It's tough, man. Great radio, bro. That's, <laughs> I don't, that's a tough question. I, I don't have an answer. Well, for give me one off the top of your head. Three, two, one, go. Matt Gurkey. Par- Parker Eels, because I like I like the idea of underdogs. That's all right. I, I don't yeah. hate it. I'm yeah. not hating on it yeah. at all. Th- since you mentioned Parker, um, yeah, uh for some reason I just like I like I like Julian. I think he's a hard worker. And I think we'll see something out of him okay. like we did Piccolo. And I think And if Parker if oh go ahead, sorry. I oh and I just I was gonna say with uh Parker, I think uh I mean I really don't know. Like, I think he's a pretty like reserved guy. Like, maybe kind of a similar racer to me. Um, I think I could see him like maybe having a similar career like I've had, where like he'll just keep grinding, doing his thing, like doing the privateer thing, and and maybe just have a slow climb. Um, but I think he will have a successful career. You know. But uh, yeah, I'm going with the underdog picks on that one. I think if he doesn't have. If he doesn't uh, win a championship for you, you can always get him into some hair modeling things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> some uh, Calvin Klein modeling. Yeah, yeah, for sure. We'd probably still I would, I like, would be uh... like uh I would be like Jared. I like Pettis and McNabb. Yeah. I would have a Pettis and McNabb. But I would I would be Blue Crew all the way. Wait, you didn't pick your manufacturer. Yeah, I don't know. That's a tough one, too. Alta. Hey, they're actually, though. Triumph. Triumph. Alta. Alta. <laughs> or what's that? What's the new? Uh, what Triumph. would be? Is Suron. It... Suron. That's the new e-bike coming in. Oh, the uh, oh, Storm B. Storm. The Storm, Storm B. Yeah. Uh, I get the what, Suron. What would be the rules in Canada? I don't I haven't looked at the rule book. If somebody showed up on the line with an Alta, would they let him race? Yeah, there's, uh, there's no real rule against it, I don't believe. There's nothing written. Uh, I believe that... Somebody, one of a manager, or something might put up a bit of a, a beef with it, but there's nothing written in there in the pro rule book, rule book about electric bikes uh, in the 250 class. Not the 450 for sure, but the 250. Do we have a, an electric bike that will last 30 plus two? I don't know. Uh, Probably not. My kids, my kids, Huskies will, but that's uh, you know not going quite pro speed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> hey, wait, wait. Did you tell us your picks? For your... Yeah. What's your pick? Yeah. What's your team? I, I was the same yeah. as uh, Jared. I was I go Pettis McNabb. Pettis McNabb on on Yamaha's though. I think McNabb's got a very bright future. Oh yeah, like he we haven't seen something like that that young since like Bassiotti, right? Right. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I think I think sky's the limit with him. Uh, he's got American ties. He's his agent his agent is the same as uh, Jet and Hunter. Mm-hmm. Um, they've they've picked him up. Why the hell can I get this thing to work now? So if Galdi just well, that's blowing McNabb exactly. so he can get back on Steve's show, or is he at the downgrade <laughs> to the bench show? And... <laughs> uh, 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 yeah, no, I just like to suck off everybody from Manitoba. <laughs> <laughs> that's where we're gonna leave it. <laughs> um, but uh, honestly, I like with McNabb. I feel like he could be. Maybe okay, maybe not a jet talent, but he could be a real legitimate guy in the states. I feel like he's what fifteen years old. Is that he's just fifteen? He's eh? fifteen. Yeah, maybe sixteen now. No, no he just turned fifteen. Yeah, so he could be a legitimate guy in the states. I feel like. Oh yeah. Uh yeah, they're actually going down there here in like a month to basically. I, I they're hoping to live at that compound eighty three where. Hmm. Yeah, Lawrence and where Hunter Webb. Uh, Joey Savacci, uh, who else? There's somebody else I'm missing there. Um, and just basically just cut laps and hang out. How many years is left on his deal? I think next year's the last year. 
So he could, in theory, like, go win Canadian Motocross Championship and then dip out to the States. 100%. Yes. Yeah. That'd be all right. Yeah. That'd be, same, I'd be, I'd be fine with, with that. Yeah, I mean, Piccolo could do that, too. What if he gets... KTM deal, and they allow him to do Supercross. He goes down there, turns some heads, go down, wins a, wins a title. I'm sure, you know, I'm sure his deal is two years, but that would still leave it like 21 years old. Yeah, yeah for you know, sure. If it, if it went well, he's still got tons of time. Um, that Club MX thing that Pettis was sort of rumored about um, uh, when I was shooting the shit with like Newf and, and Mathis about it, I'm like, fuck Canada, man. Leave it in the dust. Go down there for two hard years and give it everything you got. Yeah. He comes back, he's still only like 25 years old. Yeah. You know, he gets, he's still like, capable of winning up here. Yeah. So, so is Pettis still a uh, contract that you're writing? But I can't think it sounds like it's not happening, but um, that's was just. So, so what is, was that? So is Pettis still contracted to ride in Canada next year? I believe so. Yes, I believe so. I, I don't know about 100%, but I believe so. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, man, if I was him, chase the American dream. Yeah. Makes more sense. Why not? Yeah. How much longer do you think uh, Thompson's going to do it for? I heard he's doing Supercross only. <laughs> That's well, what someone said on the Pulp <laughs> Show or on one of the race reviews no, or something. It, it was uh, No, that was something. Uh, I said that to somebody. I don't know if I got Oh, boy. I don't know. He, there was talks of because the series is supposed to have Arena Cross and Supercross, right? Um so there was a little bit of talk like that at these supercrossers. He's good at it. If oh, he yeah. could just do that, he'd probably ride for the next fuck 10, 12 years. In there. <laughs> yeah. Like he's so beyond anybody else on the track in, in Canada. Like he looks American when he rides up here, like he's done it forever. But like, I feel like if he injects himself, he's going to go down this winter, apparently and do some supercrosses. That's his plan. He's going down to do super. On the on the east, and um, I think if he gets in there, the you know if if he could lose a little bit of that, if oh I didn't hit that turn perfect, I should just never ride again attitude. Yeah, um, like just like just go and try to find the way to enjoy. Like he's a little older now. I think he's twenty eight. He's my twenty eight. He's my age like, at twenty eight. Yeah, like yeah. So you know, go be a be a bit of a veteran guy. Like like be like what Chisholm or Brayton, maybe not obviously at that level, but go to the races feeling that way. Like, uh, I'm not going to, you know, I'm not getting a contract, but I know I'm good at this shit and go out and cut some badass laps, get in the main events and, you know, get a 12th or a 13th or a whatever. You know, I, I truly think he could do that. I think he's good enough for that. Um, well, I don't know, 450 Supercross is fucking deep right now. Jesus. Um, but um, it's, uh, yeah, I, he's good. He is good. Yeah, it almost seems like he's not into the outdoors anymore. It's, it doesn't seem that way. He ain't. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Supercross only, man. Three three races a year. Three races, heck yeah. Way to go. <laughs> just a welder. Just a, just a welder, just a Supercross rider. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> all right, boys, anything else? Should we let, let all the go? It's late yeah, or where he is. It's late. almost 11 o'clock. Oh yeah, it is. Jesus. Anything else oh, you got for us, Goldie? I... No, not really. I think I was able to talk. I was. I wasn't really sure which what you guys are looking for. This is just good little banter, man. I wish I lived closer. I would love to do this stuff every week or two. Man. Just banter about life in general and uh, moto and stuff like that. It's fun. I'm glad you guys do it. And don't uh, don't split up. Only get easier and only get better for sure. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Well, thanks, man. Appreciate uh, it. Yeah, yeah. Fun times. Thanks, boys. All right, boys. We'll stay out of trouble. And, uh, Keelan, good luck with your old lady tonight. Thank you. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> All right, boys. Take it easy. See ya. See ya. <laughs> See ya, buddy. See ya. Bye. <laughs> She called me late last night, say she loved me so. Didn't matter anymore. I say she never cared and that she never will. Do it all again, I'll be too far to find until then.